What's up, everybody? How's it going? Let's see here. Okay. So right now, I'm just kind of hanging out, getting ready for some people to hop up in this live stream. And I want to make a couple announcements in regards to moving forward with doing these live streams as well. Um, so I'm going to make the announcement right now because I know there's also going to be people that tune in that are not watching this live. Um, so basically, I am only going to be uploading a couple more live streams publicly to my YouTube channel. So basically what I'm saying is that I am going to continue doing live streams. Live streams is forever going to be a part of my YouTube channel now. I really enjoy doing it and I think it is extremely fun. But specifically, in regards to when I finish the live stream, where the video gets uploaded, what I've been doing is I've been uploading all of my live streams to my YouTube channel publicly, okay? So what I'm saying right now is I am only going to be uploading live streams to my YouTube channel publicly up to the 22nd live stream that I do. So until I hit live stream number 22, and right now we are on live stream uh, 18. Once I hit 22, I am no longer going to be uploading it publicly to my YouTube channel. Instead, it is only going to be accessible to my Patreon members as long as you are a tier two or up within the Patreon. So all of the live streams after the 22nd live stream that I do are going to be directly uploaded to my Patreon. Okay, so all the Patreon members will have access to those live streams uh, whenever I do them. And I'm going to be doing a lot. At least three a week is what I want to do. You know, I like doing it. So, okay, so I just want to say that. And I will say this a couple more times throughout this live stream. And let me start with saying what's up to some people that are in the chat. I see that we got nine people in the live stream so far. And I see that we got five thumbs up. Let's see if we can get a big thumbs up as everyone's joining into the live stream so that we can get that algorithm to get as high as we can. Okay, that's always a wonderful thing. Okay, so let me see here. So we got Adam in the chat. What's up, Adam, how you doing? We got Mai that says hello. We got Rahor quit. We got Mai Rahor quit again. Okay, so I see that we've got some questions that are being asked. So simply what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go right into it. Okay, we got Alistair. Machani the cat. What's up, Alistair? Good to see you. And um, yeah, so that is um, what I'm going to start doing. I'm just going to start reading off some of these chats and seeing what's going on. So Adam says, hey, bro, do you tutor angelic magic, in parentheses, white magic, like using the Shem Ha, uh, the Shem Ha Mafresh? If so, what angels have you invoked from that system? And from, and from what system? So I don't tutor in regards to angelic magic. I don't have any courses or any um, services that I'm tutoring. Obviously, if somebody gets a consultation with me, uh, sometimes I give information in regards to, uh, you know, deep personal information in regards to somebody's personal practice, which could be considered a form of tutoring. But um what I am in the process of uploading as we speak, literally, as I am recording this, I have a video that is uploading to my Patreon, which will be out later tonight, which is in regards to angelic magic. Okay, it's in regards to how to take the angelic energy, uh, obviously from an angel, and then place it into your magic tools, being the Enochian orb, your wand, your circle, and yourself. Okay, and that will be released tonight. Okay, I'm figuring out how to upload this in the proper formats. Uh, I've been having a little bit of difficulties this morning, but it will for sure be out. Okay, um, so that is what I have. That is literally being uploaded today. So it's cool that you're talking about angels. And then you asked me um, if I've used the Shem Ha Maf or the Shem Ham Farash. Um, and then you say, if so, what angels have you evoked from that system and what system? So I've got an entire encyclopedia book of angels 
that through the system that I'm teaching in regards of how to download the angelic energies, the attributions, and the power from these angels into your tools, therefore putting it into yourself, um, I go through tons of angels. Okay, there's a whole, I mean, as I said, I have an encyclopedia of angels. So I'm sure it's pulling on angels from the Shem Ha Farash, uh, the Kabbalah. It's pulling on all kinds of angels. And yeah, I mean, the system I teach is you can go through as many as you want in a very simple and quick way rather than doing tons of ceremonial magic and all of those other things, which, you know, I'm not bashing and I don't think is wrong. But once you do the technique that I'm teaching in regards to my magic training course that is on my Patreon for tier three members or up, then you are basically going through all of these angelic energies, once again, placing them into your orb, which is linked with you, into your circle, into your wand, then putting it into yourself, adding it to your own energy body, which is immediately giving you an energetic relationship or an energetic connection to that force itself. So that in the future, if you decide you want to do later evocations or invocations of that specific spirit being an angel or a demonic force, then you are going to have a much quicker manifestation of that force because you have the spirit of it trapped in your Enochian orb. Your Enochian orb is carrying the spirit. And that's what I teach you how to do in my magic training course is how to move the spirit of those energies into your orb and into your tools, okay? Using high-level magic. So if anyone's interested in that, you can check out the Patreon link, which is the first link in the YouTube description, okay? Okay, so I see that we got a super chat. So I want to say um, special thank you. And I was expecting this one from Brian Forshe only because Brian – was telling me that he wanted to leave me a, uh, a tip for doing his uh, his reading for him, his uh, tarot card reading. And I just want to say, Brian, I, I highly appreciate you. You've definitely been uh, a very great person to have on these live streams and also within the Patreon as well. You've been very active. You've asked a lot of great questions. And I highly appreciate that super chat. That's, that's awesome. Thank you very much, Brian. Um, and I'm glad you really liked your reading and I'm glad it resonated with you. Okay. So let's see. So my says, hello. Okay. Let me say what's up to some of the, to the super, uh, some of the YouTube members that are in the chat. So Ari says hello to Alistair. What's up, Alistair. Once again, we got Philip magical number 12. That's in the chat. Good to see you, Philip. Always great to see you in here. We got T Nimmo. What's up T Nimmo. Another YouTube member, Brian Forshee, once again, right there. And uh, we got Brian Forshe and Philip Magical Number 12 specifically have been YouTube members for over a month. So their badge has changed into the sigil, my sigil. Um, let's see. Okay, cool. So that's the YouTube members. So let me go ahead and start reading off of this chat and just start answering questions. And just so anyone knows, if you want to guarantee your question gets answered within the most depth and for sure throughout this live stream, then your best bet is going to be leaving a super chat, okay? So that's what I'm gonna to say to that. Um, and we have 12 people that are in this live stream right now, and we have seven thumbs up. So let's see if we can get more thumbs up for everyone that's in this chat. If you haven't hit a thumbs up, go ahead and hit that thumbs up so that we can get the algorithm higher so that when people search up this type of content, it immediately will get recommended to them, okay? That's always a wonderful thing. And I see the, the thumbs up going up right now, that's awesome. Okay, so let's take a look here. And I got a crow outside that's talking to me right now. All right, let's see. Rahor Quit says, what think about yoga and Eastern occult systems? Um, I think yoga is great. I mean, I'm a big, I'm a big uh, yoga person. Like I've got my yoga mat right here, <laughs> literally right there. Um, like in regards to doing physical yoga, I love it. I think physical yoga is a very powerful practice. I think you can definitely learn a lot from it in regards to the discipline that it puts you through. Um, specifically me, I do Bikram yoga, also known as hot yoga. And, you know, I will literally be in a room where it's usually around a hundred degrees and you're performing yoga within this hot room. And once again, what it does is it really challenges you on a psychological, mental, emotional, and spiritual level. Because while you're in that hot room, you want to leave, 
Okay. But you know, if you really want to gain the power, uh, and value from that yoga practice, you got to stick it out and you've got to be patient and stay through. And then after you do the yoga, you've sweat out all those toxins and you've taken in new ones, you know, assuming that you're staying hydrated and you feel so good after doing hot yoga. And it really does, uh, you know, help you evolve on a spiritual level. Um, and you also want to make sure that your yoga instructor is also somewhat in alignment with spirituality. Um, so there are going to be some yoga instructors that are not so great. And then there, there are going to be some that are very wonderful, like absolutely amazing. And specifically when I do yoga, I like to have a female, a very feminine yet experienced uh, and powerful teacher. You know, that's, that's what I prefer. And uh, that's what I think yoga is also great for. You know, when you do yoga, you typically are going to have mostly women in your class. So you can learn a lot about feminine energy. Okay. You can, you learn how to flow and you learn how to be receptive and you learn how to stay through when you feel like giving up and literally you just surrender to the, to the, to the suffering, to the, the heat, the process. And then as you make it through, it gets easier time. It gets, excuse me, it gets easier every time you do it. So you see how you develop physically, emotionally, spiritually, and mentally as you do it. So I love yoga and I think it definitely offers value in regards to doing occult practices when it comes to magic itself. Okay. They're directly connected. Okay. Um, and in regards to Eastern occult systems, um, yeah, I think Eastern occult uh, systems have ton of a uh, ton of knowledge that are connected to them. They're very ancient, you know. So specifically, when it comes to astrology, what I'm most uh, interested in is sidereal, which is primarily Eastern astrology. So Eastern occultism in general is very rooted in some really ancient practices. So whenever you're studying things from the Eastern spectrum you're getting very close to the root of where these things are coming from. So I would definitely recommend it. Okay. Mai says, do you know something about IAO, the occult power in grimoires? You know, it's funny that you say that because I was literally just reading the night side of Eden, like briefly, like on my bed for like 30 minutes, just going over a little bit. And that was brought up. And, um, I don't know too much about it. You know, I don't know enough about it to really speak about it, but I know it, it does have a lot of occult significance, especially in regards to the darker side of occult evolution. Okay. That's what I'll say. Ra Horquit says, what think about Cthulhu mythos and occult magic and Kenneth Grant ideas on it? Um, so Cthulhu mythos and occult magic. So I, I don't know about, uh, I, it's not that I don't know about Cthulhu. I definitely know who Cthulhu is and about Cthulhu, but I don't know about the mythos of Cthulhu because I never dove into HP Lovecraft. So I don't know enough about the mythos to speak on that either, but I do know Cthulhu is directly associated with Karanzon and is associated with Karanzon, or you could even say Shugal. So in Kabbalistic occult lore, we have these two prominent chaotic entities that exist within different um, areas of the abyssal plane or the abyss, the, the specifically the hidden sphere, Dath, within the abyss. And in the Sephiroth, you have Shugal, and in the Klipoth, you have Karanzon. Shugal is the masculine chaotic force. Uh, Karanzon is the feminine chaotic force. And I know Cthulhu is directly associated with the same force, that chaotic entity that's exists within the abyss. So that's what I'll say about that. Um, Alistair says, I like it. That's wonderful. I'm glad you like it. Philip's magical number 12 says, what's up, yo, what's up, Philip? Good to see you on here once again. Always good to see you. T, uh, T Nemo says, hey guys, yo, what's up, T? Awesome. Does the uh, emoji hand like that? Good to see you, T. Brian Forshe says, yo, 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 yo. What's up, Brian Forshe? Mai says, what other movie characters represent demons? Kind of like Candyman and Beelzebub. 
I only know that the headless horseman is crooked God. Uh, I think you meant to say from crotch, an Irish deity. Um, so that's interesting that you say that because I also saw saw that come up as well in regards to what you're saying about, uh, you know that the headless horseman is the crooked God. That is what that was associated with. So basically what Mai's question is saying is what other entities do I know that are in connection to the occult field, specifically Kabbalah, because that's, you know, what I'm a professional at and different Hollywood A-list movies that are out there. So for example, there was the movie Candyman. And for those of you that don't know, um, if you haven't watched my YouTube yet on the Candyman, in parentheses, full occult breakdown, you should definitely watch that video because that entire movie Candyman is literally based on a clipothic entity, which is a demonic force known as Beelzebub. Okay. So, um, what other so what other movie characters represent demons, uh, kind of like Candyman and Beelzebub? Um, I only know that the headless horseman is crooked god from Crush and Irish dude. Well, one for the for the headless horseman that you're talking about, that came up in the Green Knight. Okay, and that is the next YouTube video that I'm going to be releasing to my channel, which is the breakdown of the Green Knight and its association to the occult. Because the entire movie of The Green Knight, for those of you that don't know, The Green Knight is a sort of newly released movie. Um, and it's about a man who has to go on this journey because he makes a deal to enter into a game with this dead tree man known as The Green Knight. Which is an entire movie based on, specifically, clipothic initiation. Okay, so literally, and I explain it in the, in the, in the YouTube video that will be out uh, soon. And literally... It starts with him in a kingdom, and once again, I explain in depth in my YouTube video, so I'm not going to go crazy here, but basically the whole movie is him traveling through the clip off specifically, going from uh, Nama down to Gamaliel to Samael to Arab Zarak, and then finishing in Thagirion, and then that's where he gets done in, or at least that's where the movie ends with him about to get done in, uh, his head chopped off. And that would be the Good Shepherd ritual, just bringing it into the clipothic sphere. Okay? So they're doing that Good Shepherd technology, getting a male to the center of the tree and then ending it there. And it's very fascinating, especially if you study what I talk about in regards to the clipoth. And if you are a Patreon member, then you have access to understanding these clipothic spheres because I talk about them. Or if you've read any books, you will see as you watch this movie. The entire movie is based on the clip off and the spheres. Okay. The entire movie. So the headless horseman within that movie, for those of you that don't know, a little bit of a spoiler alert, the green knight, his head gets chopped off and then he picks it up and he rides on a horse outside of the kingdom. And that would be connected from uh, the entity that you're talking about, the headless horseman, which is the crooked God, which I literally just read about on that little PDF that I just read briefly. And it's funny you say that again, because this is your second message that you've left where there's like a little bit of a correspondence that I've had to it. That's so funny. Um, but let's see. Um, so you will notice um, within the movie, and I'm going to be probably making a YouTube video on this as well. Within the movie, the, um, uh, what is it called? The Suicide Squad number two. Okay, a little bit of a spoiler alert. At the end, there is a monster that gets released within this science-based um, lab, this big tower that they had that was a lab. I definitely should make a YouTube video on this because it's very occult-driven in nature. This lab, they called it Yidr – uh, not Yidrasil. They called it Jotunheim, which is, uh, which is a place of giants, which is associated with the Nephilim. So this tower was called Jotunheim. And in this tower, they were doing a lot of scientific studies on humans and this extraterrestrial entity that was like a real species, a physical species. And um, basically, it was this big monster that ended up breaking out of Jotunheim, which was the tower, and it went running free. And the, the monster was a, a starfish. It, you know, to the average person, they think that's random. Like, oh my God, what, what does that mean? It's just a starfish. 
Well, really what it was was a pentagram. It was a walking pentagram. And it had a big eye in the center of it. And it's connected if you study. And also this, this walking monster had these little tiny starfish that would come out of its armpits and fly around and then latch onto people's faces and suck their energy dry and, and basically possess them. And that is exactly and directly associated with the first path called Amproteus within the tunnels of Set. So if you look at that path from the night side of Eden, which would be located right here, okay, then you will see how that entire path is directly associated with uh, these basically these vampiric entities that fly around and latch on to people specifically on their head and drain energy out of them and slowly and surely possess them. And, um, yeah, it's, I mean, it, it's directly associated with that. So if you read that pathway, you're going to see within the movie, the, uh, suicide squad Two. you'll see how it manifests very clearly. And that force specifically though, the big starfish was representing the Amalek. It was representing the uh, the big chaos entity, okay, sort of um, setting itself free, okay. That essentially was the Amalek. That was the Cthulhu, okay. That was the the Qurans on in the Shugal together. That big force, and obviously within the movie they destroy that force, and that is supposed to create ritualistic programming to be able to control the Amalek. So that movie was released to try to control that chaos force, which is the Amalek. And the reason why it was a starfish is because they're trying to connect it to the multiverse, which is, you know, the, the pentagram is associated with earth, fire, water, air, and spirit. And if you look at the Kabbalistic tree, which is the multiverse, once again, I have a YouTube video that explains that. It's called what 99% of people do not know about the Kabbalistic tree, not even the Jewish rabbis. This, the entire Kabbalistic tree is how the multiverse came into formation. Okay. So the Sephiroth and the Klipoth is how the multiverse came into formation. It's not how the universe came into formation. So you have the realm of Atsaluth, Bria, uh, Yetzira, and Asaya. And this is the realm of fire, water, air, and earth, okay, directly associated with the pentagram and the fifth being spirit, which is the, the human. So that entire movie was created once again to try and control that big chaotic force for the other occultists that put the programming within the, the movie. But obviously there are high level, there are higher level occultists out there like myself that have completely unleashed that force and there's nothing they can do about it. Okay. So that's what I'm going to say to that. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'll say. Let's see here. All right. So we got some new YouTube members that are in the chat. I just want to give a special shout out and we got a super chat. So I'm going to answer that question. Just one second. So what's up Cranjus McBasketball too. I see you on here and uh, that's a YouTube member. We got Devin McLean. Good to see you uh, uh, as well. That's awesome. We got Mindflow in here. Awesome. Good to see you in here, Mindflow. All right. So that's it. Okay. So let me go and answer that super chat that I see I got. Okay. So the super chat says, oh, and I just want to say this before I answer the super chat. There are 19 people that are in the live stream right now and we have 12 thumbs up. So let's make sure we get that thumbs up to get it as high as we can. Um, because we want to get as many likes as we possibly can. You know, there's no reason why we shouldn't, you know, the more likes, the better, the more the content can get recommended to other people. So let's spread it like a wildfire. Okay. All right. Let's see here. So here is the question from Brian Forshee. Thank you, Brian Forshee. I appreciate your super chat as always. And the question says, can you do the clip off before finish the Sephiroth? Um, the answer is yes, you can, but I wouldn't recommend it. Okay. I just, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, but technically you can, um, you can take the clip, you can pull Dath down anywhere on the middle pillar. 
So if, let's say hypothetically you were traveling through the Sephiroth and you got to the center of the tree and then you became aware of the darker side of the occult, which was the clip off. And you also knew how to activate it, which is very rare. This usually doesn't, excuse me, this usually doesn't happen. Very, very, very rare. But let's say you did, then you could pull Dath down into Tifereth and open up that gateway, which would take you to universe B, the backside of this Sephirothic tree. And then from the backside of the Sephirothic tree, you have a sexual act that then will pop you into the clip off. So that means that you would have only gone to the center of the tree and then you immediately got into the clip off. Okay. So yeah, you know, there's still stuff that I don't a hundred percent know about that either in regards to the reality is, is if you haven't completed this full tree first, then you're probably not going to complete the entire clip off. So for example, if you traveled to Tifereth on the front side and then brought Dath down and opened up the gateway and got into the clip off, you're probably only going to get to the center of the clip off tree. And that's where you're going to stay. Okay, that's what I'll say to that. I think that is definitely most likely what the case is. Okay. Or the next most common way, this is the most common way that people get into the clip off, is they will complete these spheres. And when they get to the seventh, they will go for the crossing of the abyss. But rather than crossing, they will actually use that crossing experience to open up Dath. And then they will start doing invocations of you know demonic forces. Uh, oftentimes very initiatory and powerful ones like Lucifer, Lilith, Samael, Hecate, Belial, things of that nature. And then it will open this gateway depending on what their intention is. You know, if they're wanting to gain the full power from these demonic forces, it will open this gateway and then they'll get popped into uh, the clip off eventually through the same process of going to universe B on the back of the Sephiroth and dropped into the clip off. And then they will be able to travel this. So the reality is, though, they probably will only get to this highest clipothic sphere, which would be Gog Shabla. Um, and that's probably what would what would happen. And then when they, you know, when they finish here in Gog Shabla in the clip off, then they their spirit would travel back to the front, which would be universe A to then continue initiating and cross and then work through these three. And then if they wanted to go farther in the clip off, and then when they, when they finish at Kether, they'll travel back into Dath and then be able to finish and cross the abyss within uh, the clip off and then access these. And then that would be full completion. But I don't recommend that. I recommend going all the way because if you can't, if you can't go all the way here, then you're not going to be able to go all the way here for sure in the clip off. So, um, you know, not everyone is going to go as high as they can. Some people they'll, they'll only want to stay at a lower level and that's fine. You know, you can be wherever you want to be. And the same thing goes with the clip off. So that's what I'm going to say to that. Um, thank you for that question. That was a good question. Okay. So let's see here. Um, Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start reading through some of these chats and see what's going on. And I just want to say another heads up to everybody who's here. We're at that 30-minute mark. I want to let everyone know that when I get to my 20-second live stream here, just like this one, Dark Arts and Occult Sciences, then I am going to stop publicly uploading them to my channel, to my YouTube channel publicly. So I'm going to continue doing the live streams for a very long time. It's something I love to do but they will only be released after the live stream's over. They will only be available to the Patreon members that are tier two or higher. So all of my live streams, once they're over, will then be uploaded to Patreon once I finish my 20 second live stream here. So until the 20 second live stream, they are going to be public, okay? I just wanna let everyone know leading up to that day so that you understand when you don't see any more live streams that are on my YouTube channel, 
they are going to be on my Patreon. So that's something that my Patreon members can expect. Okay? Alrighty. So let's continue. Brian Forshee says, your tips, sir. Appreciate you very much. Um, let's see. Stilianos says, hi, Jer. What is the next step after you finish all the tree, all four sides? Um, so the next step is build your kingdom. Okay. The next step is um, basically, okay. Yeah. So the next step is building your kingdom. So when you finish the entirety of the tree, which means you've mastered the multiverse completely and you're connected to the megaverse, you build your kingdom. You, you live the life that you truly want to live. That is in most alignment with your soul, which is your purpose. So one, you're living out your purpose. You're doing what you love to do. And what you love to do is in alignment with evolution. And on top of that, you're building a life that you want to experience. So you're building your kingdom with everything that you want in it. And you're going to, you know, experience all the things that you want to experience. That's what you do when you finish the entire tree. Okay. And there is a process that happens once you finish uh, called raising the bride, where you, as a man, you would get a woman, as a king, you would get a queen. And as a queen, you would get a king. Okay. So you can raise the the bride in those two senses, you know, whether you're a man or a woman. And that is basically as a man for me, for me, in my example, I would get a high priestess that can help rule my kingdom, but is also going to help me create and control my kingdom because the, the female, the woman who is the high priestess uh, has the ability to project the influence of the magician who is the obsessimus, the top of the tree, which would be me in this scenario. So she's going to project my reality because the woman's assemblage point pushes outwards. Okay. The man's assemblage point goes inwards. So she'll be able to push my influence, my energetic reality and spread this bubble that continues to expand as I gain power and as, as she gains power and that will influence the entire world. Okay. That's why Beyonce and Jay-Z are together. That's why Katy Perry and Orlando Bloom are together. That's why there are power couples that you see with some of the highest level A-list celebrities. It's because of this technology. And the same thing appears actually in the movie uh, Candyman. You'll notice at the very end of Candyman, uh, Belzebub, who is the Candyman, he comes into full form. And then you see at the end of the movie, a quick spoiler alert, his girlfriend the man who turned into Candyman, his girlfriend originally, she becomes his high priestess at the very end of the movie. And it's the same technology that I'm talking about. And uh, the man, and I'm talking about myself in this scenario, I will exist in this sphere and my woman will exist at the highest female sphere, which would be Bina, where she projects my kingdom and I'm at the top and this is our kingdom. And that's how we rule it. So that's what I'll say to that. Um, thank you. That was a good question. Um, so Alistair says, my sound is messed up or the YouTube. Um, I think it's your sound. I think everyone can hear me. Uh, let's see. Cheryl Michelle says, yeah, I made another live. <laughs> nice. And then she says she's from Australia. Wonderful. I'm glad you were able to make this live. It's always good to have you on here. Um, Stiliano says opinion about the saints of Christianity and the great white brotherhood. Um, you know, if they had any power, then I'm going to, you know, take their power. I'm going to download it using my cult techniques that I teach on the magic training course. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that's what I got to say, say about that. Nothing too crazy. I don't really know too much about it, you know? Okay, Ichis Ouroboros puts a thumbs up. Thank you. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Is there any more super chats that I didn't see? Okay, no. Scrolling back up. Okay, Mysterious Type says, Hey, man, I recently found your channel from Eli Mercury's channel. That's awesome. I love Eli Mercury. He's a good guy. And he's uh, 
he's definitely got a you know he's got a lot of experience in the occult for his age like a hundred percent so that's cool that you found my channel from his and we are we are friends uh, we've definitely talked on the phone a couple times and you say and I have really been enjoying watching through your videos. I definitely plan on initiating through the clip off at some point. That's wonderful. And I'm glad that you've been learning a lot through my videos. Um, yeah, a lot of the stuff that I talk about in regards to the clip off, there's a lot of people that don't know, uh, don't know and understand the clip off like I do. And um, yeah, that's the main reason why I make these videos is because the entire cult is based around uh, initiation. Like it's, a, it's about gaining power. And the way you gain power is by focusing on your initiations which is your own personal evolution. Like, I don't understand why, why there are more people really talking about structured initiation. Um, I mean, I understand why it's, it's because most people don't know about it, but you know, n the fact that I know about it, you know, why not share it? And I love talking about it. That's the reason why I share it. I really do like talking about it. And it's also a part of my purpose. It's part of the reason why I know so much about it. I was literally, I came here to do this. So yeah, so in regards to the clip off, it is a path to gain a lot of power and um, it is dangerous and it's, it's challenging, but it is very rewarding and you will learn a lot about yourself. Um, and I will be releasing a course later down the road on how to initiate into the Sephiroth and the clip off, which is going to be in video format that no one has ever done before. And it is going to be very, very powerful. Okay. So that's what I'm going to say to that. So maybe at some point in time when that course comes out, maybe you'll take that course. Who knows? But uh, thank you for that feedback. I appreciate you. And if you chat with Eli Mercury, tell him I said, what's up? Okay. Let's see. Mai says, I got hornets landing on me. They don't bite or anything. Is this a sign from Belzebub? I don't invoke him. Um, it yeah, it could. I mean, Belzebub is energetically connected to all insects. So there definitely is that energetic connection for sure. Um, and, but also on top of that, you know, insects have their own archetypal meanings as well. So yeah, on one end, you could definitely say it's associated with Belzebub. But on another end, you know, you also want to look up what the archetypal energy of a hornet represents to you. Okay or represents in general so that you can connect it back to yourself to see what else it could be teaching you. Okay. Cranges McBasketball uh, 2 says that's been happening to me too. Okay. That's cool. So my question to you two is, did this start happening ever since you started watching my videos on Belzebub or has this always been happening? Okay. That's my question to you too. Um, and then Cranges says, a bee just flew directly at me from afar and stayed on my chest. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, and yeah, once again, all insects are connected to Belzebub. Bel Belzebub has a rulership over insects. Okay. The flies. Okay. Alistair says, need us move. Okay. I don't know what you're saying. Sorry. Uh, Audi 47 says, Hey, Jer with a heart. Good to see you. Uh, and I love the number next to your name, 47. That's my favorite number. And, uh, yeah, good to see you. Glad to have you here. Um, Mai says so many yoga instructors do chakra and light work these days, and they push homeopathics and snake oil on people. Um, okay. So you say so many yoga instructors do chakra and light work these days, and they push yeah. So you got to be careful. You know, there's, you know, you got to intuitively always feel it out. You know, if you have an instructor that acts like they don't really know what they're doing and if they seem like they're really tight and they're stressed out and they're not relaxed and they're not receptive and they're not feminine, then you want to stay away from that type of instructor. You know, over here in California, I see that all the time. There's tons of instructors out here that aren't even in good shape whatsoever. And they're teaching yoga and people are showing up to these classes. And it's like, you're not even in good shape and you do not look healthy. Why would you learn from somebody that's like that? You know, like if I didn't look like I was in shape and I wasn't healthy, and if I didn't look like I was getting results from the things that I talk about, then I wouldn't expect you to follow me either or to want to learn from me because 
I'm the first example that is giving you the information. The information that I'm giving you should be a reflection of what I've done from example. So yeah, the same thing in any field. Like if you ever have a teacher or someone that's talking that seems really stressed out and really tight and rigid and shelled and they're unable to be receptive and listen and understand, then you want to go elsewhere. Okay. So definitely with the yoga field too, you want a female teacher primarily. That's what I would recommend. Uh, that's very feminine yet very powerful, very receptive. And you know, those are, those tend to be the, you know, the best teachers in my personal experience. Okay. Mysterious type says, but I feel like I want to be a bit more prepared energetically before I start the clip off as well as get a better idea of what is expected of me in the process. And that is a wonderful thing. And I'm glad you're saying that because that is the exact message that I'm trying to get across to the mass collective, specifically to my followers. Okay. Um, which will eventually touch the mass collective at some point in time. But yeah, it's the main message I want to get across. Like the clip off is not a joke. It is not a joke. When I got into it, I thought, you know, I knew it wasn't a joke, but I thought I could get it done quick. And it took two years to get the majority of it done, the big bulk of it. And those two years were the most challenging years of my entire life. So that's what I'll say to that. So definitely prepare yourself, do some research, listen into my channel, get as much knowledge as you can so that when you do get into it, you know what to expect. And when the energies start afflicting you and you start going through those transformations, you know what you're going through. Okay. Cranja says, woo, nice. Yes. Okay. So I just want to let everyone know if you have any questions that you want to guaranteed get answered within this live stream, then what I would definitely recommend, especially in the most depth, is I would recommend leaving a super chat. So if you leave a super chat, your question is for sure going to get answered throughout the live stream. And I'm going to cover it in the most depth as I can. So make sure if you ask me a question, ask me like, any question that you really want to know about in regards to the occult field, because I will cover it. Okay. So that's what I want to say. And then for every, everyone who is in this live stream right now that hasn't hit a thumbs up, make sure you definitely look down and see if you hit a thumbs up because the more thumbs up we get, the more this content will get recommended to people that are in the occult field that potentially may need to hear this uh, information and things in that nature. And also I want to encourage you to share this link on your social medias or to any friends or family that you may have that are interested in this type of occult information. Okay. So go ahead and share it, you know, feel free to share it. You know, I, I really encourage it. Okay. Other than that, let's continue going down. Let me just double check to make sure no super chats came in. Okay. All right, cool. So here we go. So my says, Jer, you said you killed a bee in your Candyman video. There is a powerful Shinto ritual where you put insects in a jar and the one that kills the others is used as a charm. I would try it someday. Interesting. Very interesting. So what I did instead, and that does sound interesting. It does sound cool. But what I did instead is I have all these insects in this jar. So I'll name them all for you. I've got a wasp. I've got a fly right next to the wasp. I've got a beetle. And I've got, there's another, there's the fly or wait, what is that? Yeah, that's the fly. And then there's spiders. There's about three spiders in here. Okay. So what I did is I put them all in that jar and the jar was actually gifted to me by one of my brothers, who's also a high level initiate in regards to the clip off. He's been going through initiations with me since the beginning of my journey. And once I had, he was the one who gave me the jar, as I said. And, um, once I didn't know what to do with the jar, I really didn't. And then I saw a little spider crawling on my wall and I'm no stranger to spiders. And immediately my intuition told me said, put the spider in your jar. And then I realized that's why I have the jar. So then I got the spider, I put it in the jar and then I was like, okay, do I just like let it sit in there? And this, the spider like really quickly just suffocated and died. And, um, I realized, okay, so this is what I'm supposed to do. That the insect's supposed to die in my jar. And then my the next intuitive thought I got was take your dark crystal, specifically this one, this little um, 
smoky quartz crystal that I have, which is gray, which is the color of death, and place it on top of the jar. And then I did that, and then intuitively, I psychically saw that the death energy from that spider had moved into my crystal. And I was like, very interesting. That was very interesting how it all pieced together. So then I just started repeating the process. I saw another spider, boom, put it in my jar. A different kind, a mother spider that was killing all these other insects on my door. And my door is the only door with spiders on it too, by the way. Out of all the people in my apartment complex that are on my floor, my door is the only one with spiders and everything. It's perfect. And it kills all these other insects. And then in my mind, I was like, you know, I'm going to let you stay. You know, you can do your thing. But if you come down and you interfere with me, then I'm going to put you in my jar. I just like gave that intention out and communicated that energetically to the spider. And next thing you know, I open the door and the spider's hanging down from my door. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, I gave you a heads up. And I put in my jar, put the cap on, and then it died. You know, it took a couple days, but it died. And this time I left the crystal on top until it died. And then I repeated that process over and over again with all these other insects. And specifically, only the bee and the fly came after I did the invocation of Candyman and Belzebub, which is the funniest thing. It literally happened like two days after. So that was a direct sign of their energetic influence for sure. Um, yeah, and I once again, I, I catch energies in here. Okay. So let me see. So I see that we got a uh, – and thank you, my thank you for bringing that up. That's really cool. That's really cool. Um, so I see we got some super chats. Okay, cool. So we got a super chat from Jay Swoop. That was $5. I appreciate you, Jay Swoop. Um, that's always awesome. I appreciate the super chat. And then I see you left another super chat with a question. And this super chat says, how do I hide being an occultist from Christian people energy wise? Because the people I'm living with are Christian. Okay. So as an occultist, the best way to hide psychic energy, spiritual energy in regards to demonic practices or occult practices is going to be doing invocation of specific spirits that can grant invisibility. So what I'm going to recommend is look into the Ars Goetia demon known as Balaam. So I'm actually going to pull it up right here um, on my quick Goetia guide. Let me see here. And I'm going to search up Balaam and I'm going to give you a brief description of what this spirit can do. Belong. Cool. All right. So I'm going to read off the description of Balaam from this app called the Goetia Guide, which you can literally download on your smartphone. Okay. So here we go. Balaam helps with the ability of being invisible in the astral realm and to be unnoticed in physical. So that's exactly what you're looking for. So in the astral realm is your psychic energy body. So you have your soul energy body, which contains soul fluid, and that's what travels through the astral realm. Okay. And then you have your spirit, which emanates outside of your bioplasmic energy field. Okay. So this is exactly what you want to be invisible so that when you come into contact with people for, for you, Christians, they're going to not be aware that you're into the dark arts and they're not even going to suspect it because this force will influence them to make you invisible, okay? And it will cloak you, okay? So I would do an invocation of this force to, this, de this demonic force, to ask for its invisibility towards the exact people that you're looking to be invisible towards, okay? So I'm going to keep reading the uh, rest of the attributions. And this is the first demonic that I actually worked with myself. This was the very first demon that I ever invoked. Okay. This is useful if you are trying to avoid someone or something, or if you are performing energy vampirism and do not wish to be detected. Okay. That's exactly what you want. Balaam can teach you how to take away, uh, how to take your way out of a tricky situation. He can improve your mental abilities such as humor, wit, and memory. Balaam is also a divination spirit, dream project, uh, projectionist, okay? 
I'm going to give you some uh, some of the attributions that are associated with Balaam so that you can have them um, for your invocation. So the tarot is going to be the seven of wands. The planet is going to be Mars or Mercury. I would have both. Uh, metal is going to be copper. The element is air and fire. The color is yellow. The plant is oak. The incense is frankincense. The zodiac is Leo. No wonder it was the first demon I worked with. I'm a Leo. And then the demonic end is Larash, Tasa, Vifa, Welk, Balam. At the very bottom. So you can screenshot that if you want. Okay? And then this is the sigil. Boom. Okay? Cool. So I appreciate your uh, your super chat. And I definitely think that probably answered your question. Okay. So let me see here. So I see we got 22 thumbs up, which is always a great number. I love seeing 22. Okay. Let's see here. I'm going, I'm scrolling back up. If anyone else has any super chats, definitely make sure you leave them. Um, if you want to guarantee your questions get answered throughout this live stream, now is your chance. Um, and I will be answering them in the most depth that I can uh, get into. Okay. So that's what I'm going to say to that. And once again, if you want to join the YouTube membership and have your name appear in green and get the badges next to your name and also access to the exclusive emojis that I have that can be used for psychic warfare, then you will find that link pinned in the live chat at the top. Okay. Or if you're watching this video when it's not live, it's going to be the third link in the YouTube description. Okay. So that's what I'm going to say to that. All righty. So let's see here. Where was I? Okay, Carl. Oh, looks like we just got an appointment today. Cool. So I just got an appointment. So also, let me say that then as well. So if you want to book a tarot card reading with me, where I can literally locate where you are on the Kabbalistic tree, then check out the second link that is going to be within this YouTube description or any of my recent previous videos, YouTube description. That's at the second link. Or if you go to my uh, Instagram page, which is jer, J-E-R underscore 477, I have a book now tab, which literally is where you can book a tarot card reading with me that I do, where I can locate where you are on your Kabbalistic journey, okay? And you don't even need to know about the tree at all to be on this journey. As long as you've been taking your evolution seriously, I promise you are somewhere located on that tree. I've done over 100 readings so far, and every single one I've been able to pinpoint where people are located, okay? And there's been tons of great feedback, okay? So that's why I'm going to say that. Just got an appointment right there, so I thought I would uh, say that, okay? Let's see here. And I also give homework at the end of the readings as well to go a little bit deeper into it if you would like to. Carl Ortega says, finally, my first live from you. Great to have you uh, here, Carla. Great to have you here, and I'm glad you were able to make this live stream. It's always wonderful uh, to have someone that doesn't usually get the opportunity to make make it into the live streams to show up. I love that. All right, let's see here. So we got Devin McLean that says, oh, yeah, definitely been seeing um, a lot more flies lately. Okay, cool, cool, cool. That's awesome. Um, and, and just remember this, when, when you, um, you know, for a lot of you that study my content and study the things that I talk about or study the occult in general, but especially when you're studying from an, a real practitioner that has developed these forces within themselves, you know, I emanate those forces. So when I make videos on Belzebub and when I make videos on other entities, Lucifer, Hecate, uh, you name it, those energies are coming through the screen. So if you're watching the, the videos I have in regards to, for example, the Candyman associated with Belzebub, and then you start noticing flies around you, you're noticing the force that's emanating through me that I've developed within myself, okay? So just remember that. These, ener these entities and these energies are very powerful and very real, and you do not want to be oblivious and ignorant to them because they're being used on a daily basis, okay? And they can be very valuable, they can become your your most 
valuable energies in regards to spiritual protection and gaining spiritual power. So you want to gain their um, awareness. You want to be on that. You know, you want to be open to receiving all that knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Okay, from the, these dark entities. You don't want to shut them off. Okay, unless you don't, and you know, unless you want to. It is what it is. I'm not going to convince you. Okay, so look at that. So we got 24 people in the live stream, and then we got 24 thumbs up. 24, 24. That's a good number. That's a good number because it's 12 and 12. 12 times or 12 plus 12 is going to equal 24. And for all of you that have been paying attention, I keep mentioning 12 is the Fibonacci sequence for all fortunate things, for all good things. Okay. It's also the number connected to Jupiter, which is fortune. Jupiter brings good fortune. Um, and 12 is that number that's associated with it. And if you do 12 times two, that's like really good things. 12 plus 12 or 12 times two. And you'll notice on the new Kanye West album that he just released, which is in alignment with his mother coming from the mother energy. Uh, there was a song on his album called 24 and it's all about higher power and things of that nature. So he's subconsciously and unconsciously putting out that number, strengthening it. Okay. And, um, yeah, it's a very powerful number and we'll leave it at that. And there's also 12 Zodiacs as well. Okay. All right. So let's see here. Cran just says, once a psychic removed Belzebub attachment to me, I wonder if he was attacking me because I used to be a Christian, but now I feel like he wants to work with me. And now you are talking about him. There you go. And that's how it works. You know, a lot of the times, see, when you get into Christianity and when you get into other religions that are not in alignment with your own evolution, these demonic forces are programmed to feed off of people like that. You know, a lot of these demonic forces are programmed to attack and make suffer people that are out of alignment of their highest potential, making these people shells, suffering generators is what I like to call it. Because that energy of suffering, when you can shell somebody, it produces a lot of energy. Okay. The, the reality is it does produce a lot of energy. So there are other people that are that are evolving that can use that energy from people that are not evolving, that are just staying shell. So for the religions like Christianity, that's a religion that either leads to you getting energetically sacrificed or getting shelled. Okay. And um, yeah, so with spirits like Belzebub and all of the Klipothic spirits, they will totally attack, you know. If you're, you know, someone that's in these religious practices of Christianity or anything that's self-similar, um, or if you're afraid of these demonic forces, they will attack you because you are making yourself vulnerable because you're not aware that you have dark matter energy in your own being, right? We all come from the, we literally all come from the abyss. We all come from the void. Every one of us, we literally, before we had these physical bodies, we were a soul which is dark matter energy in nature that came from the abyss and the void and then came into being within the multiverse within this planet. So we are just as much dark matter energy, if not more, because it's rooted in our soul as we are light matter energy, light, which is spirit. Okay. And this goes for everybody. So to trick a human being in thinking that dark and dark matter energy and negativity is evil is the biggest con you could ever play on a human species because you can trick them from forgetting where they come from. And if you can trick them from forgetting their roots, you can control them completely. Okay. But you don't have to believe me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. So thank you for bringing that up, Cranjus. I appreciate that. Um, Dallas, Bruce Dallas 3 says, I'm in here. Yo, what's up, Bruce Dallas? Good to see you. Name definitely looks familiar. I, I definitely have seen you on the Patreon 100%. Carla says, a spirit say to me, 
he come from the Scarlet City. You think he means to, you think he is connected to Gamaliel? Um, well, he's definitely from Universe B. That's a, that's a fact. And the Scarlet City, that's the city of Babylon. So that is an ancient city, which, you know, the city of Babylon, and especially all the spirits that are associated with the city of Babylon and the Scarlet Woman, are mostly dark matter energies, very ancient, demonic dark matter energy forces. Um, and they are very powerful. So uh, I don't know if it's from Gamaliel. I don't know where it's from in regards to the clip off, but if you're feeling intuitively like it's Gamaliel, then maybe it's Gamaliel. So I would trust your intuition. Okay. Cheryl says, I see one of those flying creatures one night through my third eye. I felt it didn't even see me because I was vibrating my energy at a high rate. I felt, I felt it was going for a feed on negative energy. Um, so what I'll say to that is that it definitely saw you, you know, you're not going to get to a place where you raise your vibration so much that you're unseen or untouchable by these entities. That's a, that's a big lie in the occult field. It's actually reversed. The more you raise your vibration, the more you raise your energy, the more likely you are to get fed on because you're generating more energy. You know, you're becoming a more, uh, powerful battery and, uh, if you're afraid of dark entities, which a lot of light workers are, a lot of chakra workers are, that's why they're always raising their frequency because they think the more they raise their frequency that they're being untouchable or that they're making themselves immune to these dark forces. But once again, that's backwards. You're making yourself more vulnerable to these dark forces and the dark forces are still feeding off of you and there's more of them feeding off of you because you're generating more energy for them. So they, they trick these dark forces are they're They're sneaky, you know, they're, they're, they're subtle and they influence the unconscious and subconscious. So they work in such a way where they will trick you to continue to do lots of chakra work and to continue to raise your vibration simply because you are afraid to dive into your own rooted being, which is your deep unconscious and subconscious, which embraces the dark energy side of who you are. The only way you're going to be protected from dark matter energies is by embracing them. Okay. It's, the, it's just a fact, you know, it just is a fact, you know, there's not, a, this isn't a common statement that's being made because people are afraid of it, you know, and, the, and rightly so. I mean, a lot of these dark energies are challenging and they are extremely powerful. And when you see how real they are, it can frighten you. But that's not an excuse to not trying to understand the true nature of your own being. Because the reality is, is yes, there are dark forces. And yes, you are a dark force too. Your soul is dark. Okay. Your soul is dark. Now, once again, how do you get someone to be completely controlled? You shell their soul, which means you distract them from their inner being, which is that dark primordial side of who they truly are, making them forget that they come from the abyss, that they come from the void. You know, that's how you shell a soul. You distract everything away from the soul. And then once again, you have a lot of light workers that raise their vibration thinking they're making themselves immune to these entities and these forces, and they're only making themselves juicier, okay, to be devoured. Uh, and once again, no one has to believe me. You don't have to believe me. Please keep keep doing what you're doing, you know, for everyone that does that kind of stuff. But yeah, in regards to what you're saying, Cheryl, um, no, it's not that that entity didn't see you because your your vibration was at a high rate. Um, they are they do come to feed off of negativity. But remember, there is a negative side to your energy, okay, your energy field. So it's healthy to be negative sometimes. Not to, to be negative as in you see things from a negative perspective where everything doesn't work for you, everything's all bad, but to feel through your emotions that maybe you're not feeling great. That's completely healthy to acknowledge that I do not like the way I feel, okay? I don't like the way I feel. So I'm going to do something to see if I can tweak this or I'm at least just going to embrace this feeling and observe it to my best ability 
to hopefully one day understand it. This is how you make yourself immune spiritually to dark matter energies. Okay. And this information is what most people are not telling you. Okay. Uh, so, uh, entities like dark matter, energy entities, demonic forces, they do feed on fear and anxiety. Okay. It's a fact, but there's nothing wrong with fear and anxiety. That is a natural part of who you are. For example, every day you wake up, you have fear about doing something that could potentially put your life at risk. So when I'm cooking food and I'm seeing a hot pan that has a flame on it, there is fear in my mind that tells me if I move my hand in the wrong way and it goes into that flame, I'm going to burn myself. That is a very healthy fear because had my hand went in there, I would burn my hand alive. Okay. This is a natural fear. So when you get attuned to these demonic forces, the way you perceive fear and anxiety and all these things starts to shift and it builds these connections to these dark forces, which then download into you, you know, if you're getting into the art of learning about them and starting to do invocation as a magician, you then download those forces into you. And then those attributations from those forces become your attributations and the power from those forces becomes your power, making you immune to that type of force and becoming the ultimate being. So that's what I'm going to say to that. I appreciate you. Thank you for that question. Um, let's see here. So did we get another super chat? Okay. No. All right. So once again, if anyone has any super chats, make sure you leave your super chats because I will be covering them in the most depth. You were, you will for sure get them covered within this live stream. Okay. So I definitely want to say that. And we also hit the hour mark, the hour seven hour mark in seven minutes. And I want to say, just so everyone that's new in this live stream, I want to let you know that when I hit my 22nd live stream, this is the 18th, I am no longer going to be publicly uploading them to YouTube once they are finished. I'm going to be uploading them to my Patreon so that all my Patreon members that are tier two or up are going to gain access to the live stream so that they can have it permanently. Okay. It will no longer be uploaded to my YouTube channel publicly once I get to the 22nd live stream. Okay. Right now I'm on the 18th. So we have the 19th, 20, 21, 22. So four more that will be public. Um, and that's just what I'm going to do, you know, as a, um, benefit to my, uh, Patreon members. And it's also going to clean up my YouTube channel a little bit more. So I don't have all my like mix-ins between my, you know, professional video setup and then my live streams that are mixed in with there. Um, so I just wanted to make that clear. Um, once again, I'm still going to be doing live streams on YouTube. You're still going to see this over and over, but they're not going to be released afterwards publicly only to my Patreon members. They will be public. Okay. So that's what I'm going to say to that. Alrighty. Let's see here. So I see we got another YouTube member that is in the chat. We got Alexis 23. Good to see you in here. Um, and I also want to say that we have 26 people that are in the live stream. We also have 26 thumbs up. If there's anybody that's in here that is new to the live stream that has not hit a thumbs up yet, definitely make sure you hit that thumbs up. Okay. Let's make sure that thumbs up gets as high as we possibly can. It would be absolutely amazing if we could get it to 30 thumbs up right now. Okay. So that's what I'm going to say right there. All right. Let's see here. Scrolling back up to where I was. Okay, so here we go. So Cran just says, I've been wondering this question too. Good. Well, I'm glad I answered that. TSRC number 41 says everything comes from the dark side. Yes, because everything comes from that abyssal um, space. Okay, everything comes from space. It comes from that abyss, that dark matter energy. And any professional occultist will know this and should tell you this. Okay. Alistair says, what if you did it by accident for this? Before the Sephiroth. 
Um, I already explained that question. Uh, Mai says, I see Amalek references everywhere, especially in games. I posted one to the Facebook group. Okay, I just saw that actually when I was uploading the link from this live stream to my uh, private Facebook group. Um, and yeah, Amalek influences are everywhere. They are absolutely everywhere. And this is the force that is most feared um, by these uh, inner Jewish rabbis that have been controlling the Kabbalistic tree for about 600 years now. Um, so yeah, Amalek is a very powerful force. And once again, is the most feared force by the people that have previously been in control of the Kabbalistic tree. They've been trying to lock this force up and create um, an energy around it, create an aura. I don't want to say an aura around it, but an influence around it that makes people afraid of it, that makes people think it's evil so that it can't be accessed. Because the way it becomes accessed is by somebody like myself that goes willingly and works with that force and intends to use that force and is not afraid of that force. So, and that force gets completely unlocked within the lowest sphere of the clip off, Thamiel. Okay. All right. And the biggest influence of Amalek in the entirety of uh, public movie industry or TV industries is going to be the, the series of Game of Thrones. That is literally the biggest influence, the most uh, profound influence of Amalek that is out publicly where you have Queen Darneris and her black dragon. Okay, the other two dragons died, um, which was in reference to the, the double ram's horns. The counterclockwise spiral is all the death and destruction, which one of the dragons died. And then the other dragon was in correlation to the clockwise spiral seven times, which is in connection to losing all of the sublime good. All of the good things were sucked out of that dragon. And that was the dragon that was turned into a White Walker. Okay. And then the third dragon was the Amalek. Okay. It was the Amalek force. And Queen Darneris happened to be the woman who was in control of that force, but she needed Jon Snow as the uh, Kether or the, the Ipsissimus to help her conquer the city. But then obviously in the, in the TV series, Jon Snow turns around and stabs her. And that was from the uh, A-list movie industries influencing it to be ritualistic so that people do not raise the bride and gain access to the Amalek force. That's why Queen Darneris was sacrificed or killed at the end. But in reality, that's not what's actually happening, okay? In the real world, that's not what's happening. So the movie was great, and it spread the influence of Amalek, but it didn't do exactly what they thought it was going to do. So that's what I'll say. Okay. Audi47 says... How do you know you've successfully moved from one sphere to another? I know you said once it was a complete shift in mindset, but are there other obvious signs or just complete intuition? So it's definitely going to be intuition, but primarily if you are studying the Kabbalistic tree and all of the spheres and even the pathways that are between spheres, that's when you'll start to really understand where you're located and when you're moving from one sphere to another. But simply... You know, you're not going to know that if you don't know about the tree. So if you know about the tree, then you can know what to expect because you'll be aware of what planetary influences are associated with the sphere, what spirits are associated with the sphere, what symbolism and all these other things, which is all stuff I talk about on my Patreon. And then you can do self-reflection and say, where am I? What have I been experiencing? What am I being intuitively led to? What do I think where I'm at? And then you can put the pieces of the puzzle together and then boom. Or you could book a tarot card reading with me and I can literally tell you yourself. Okay. So that's what I'll say to that. Good question. Thank you, Audi47. Um, let's see. TSRC says, I get what you're saying though. There you go. Bruce Dallas3 says, I'm a Patreon member. Yes, I know you are. Good to see you on here, my friend. 
Uh, TSRC says, that's right. Wonderful. Astral Egregor says, hello, sir. Love your videos. Great information. Thank you, Astral Egregor. I appreciate you. Thank you for letting me know, and I appreciate your feedback, 100%. Mysterious Type says, what was your experience with Arachne, Sephirons, and the Clip-Off? Um, so yeah, so basically, um, so the dark feminine force itself is going to have that spider-like quality to it. So for example, the way that I work it out in my perspective and in my initiatory workings. Um, Hecate was the overarching feminine force, the dark female. So Hecate had rulership over the Arachne, over the Lilith, over the Scarlet Woman. So when I worked with Hecate, I was getting all of that. So I never specifically worked with Arachne or Sephirans because I was in direct connection with Hecate during the, the portions of my initiation that I needed to... Uh, you know, work with that spider energy. Okay. So I know that when I was working with, uh, that Hecate force, there was a lot of spider symbolism. Um, and I was seeing like all these signs and I was studying about what it means. And there's even an, an entire book series by Kenneth Grant that talks all about the spiders within universe B called the book of the spider literally talks all about them. It's a huge book. And um, so I never invoked Arachne. I never invoked Sephirons. I just worked with Hecate and Hecate gave me all the energy and all the influences that I need to understand fully about the spiders and to use them and to gain their power. Um, and also you naturally are going to get that by working through the, the tunnels of set because there are spiders that exist within the tunnels of set that try to attack you. And whenever a spider tries to attack you, you either can you know, you either get through it, um, by, uh, just overcoming it. So like, let me explain a little bit about what I mean, you know, in more depth. So like when I say those spiders attack you, what I'm referring to is, um, their energies. Okay. They're literal energies that can move through other people and then afflict you. Okay. It's not like physical spiders running around attacking you, although it can manifest that way too, like literal physical spiders. But it's mostly energies, okay? Dark forces that are these spider astral forces that literally possess people and try to harm you as you're traveling through the tunnels of set, which is universe B. And if you're somebody like me, who's a black magician, a black brother, I'll say, I, I don't have mercy. Okay. So if you're going to attack me, I'm going to attack you. So on my journey, there were spiders that manifested a lot of the times in my managers and in my, the people I was working for, a lot of times that's how they manifested. So there was other times where it manifested in other people. Uh, I had it manifest in somebody on YouTube that tried to attack me, uh, you know, all psychically and stuff like that. Sometimes it can manifest physically. People want to fight you or stuff, whatever the case may be. But long story short, I identified all these people as enemies. There were people trying to stop me as I was evolving for no reason. I was, I was not giving them a reason to want to come against me. Like I was doing my job. I was working hard, helping everything run the way it needs to run. And there was people that would get jealous, people that thought it wasn't fair, people that were bored with their life and just wanted to start problems. And because they were the spiders being influenced by the spiders, of course, they're going to try and stop me because I'm traveling on the astral. So what I did is I would attack them. So I would psychically curse them and I would always destroy them. So whenever it manifested in someone, somebody that I worked for, I would do a curse on that person. And the next thing you know, they stopped messing with me because it worked. <laughs> and then they, you know, something would manifest in their physical reality, whether they lose their job, they lose huge amounts of money, and then really bad fortune started happening to them. And when you do that, what you're doing is you're attacking or cursing that spider that was possessing them by cursing their physical being. Because if the spider's in their physical energy field and you curse their physical energy field, you're also affecting the spider. Okay. And when you do that, you destroy the spider. 
and that energy comes back to you. Similar to Mortal Kombat, if you can kill one of the Chosen that has the Black Dragon, that energy comes back to you. The tattoo of the Black Dragon will go and go to your arm or your body. It's the same concept. So I did that so many times that I developed all the power from all these spiders. And that's that's what I needed. And when I would work with Hecate, there would be some times, or even feminine forces in general like Lilith um, or you know other feminine entities, which there's a lot of in regards to the Klipoth, these spiders would manifest. And you know, once again, as a black magician, I attack them. And that energy comes back to me when I finish. So I gain all the power from that spider afterwards. So that's what I'll say to that. So that's why a lot of people say, like, be careful when you work with Arachne and Sephirans, because like when you're working with an energy that has to do with these spiders, you know, we're talking about these astral entities, which are the spiders that are programmed to try to stop you. So that's why people say, be careful when working with Arachne and Sephirans, because you're going to get attacked by the spiders when working with them. But it's not meant to necessarily just destroy you. It's meant to help you evolve if you handle it properly. So when you're working with Arachne and Sephirans, you want to make sure you're telling Arachne and Sephirans, like, I want to evolve. I want to gain power from invoking you. I want to gain your power. I want to gain the power to reach my highest potential so that those forces can help you destroy the spiders. So for me, it was Hecate. And when I would work with Hecate, I had a spider that came and tried to attack me. Which, manif which manifested through a physical person and I cursed them and they lost everything and I gained all their power and I'm thriving. So that's what I'm going to say to that. That's what I'm going to say to that. So Audi 47 says, how do you know you're progressing successfully through the tree? Is there certain meditations, rituals you do, or is it just intuition? Also, do you become more receptive to your intuition. Um, so yeah, so the way you know you're successfully traveling through the tree is you notice your reality is shifting pretty rapidly and you're seeing a lot of occult significance show up on a day-to-day -day basis. You'll see a lot of symbolism. You'll notice through your environment, there will be certain people possessed by these um, Kabbalistic entities that are associated with the tree. So obviously, if you don't know about the tree whatsoever, you're not really going to have a pretty, you're not really going to have much of an awareness of what's going on, but you will know intuitively that things are changing. Things are shifting, like things are changing in your life. Um, so that's what I'll say to that. Um, and the ritual that you do is simple. I mean, you do invocation, uh, of this spirit that's associated with the sphere that you're working with. And you know, that's pretty much it. And you do an invocation, you draw the sigil, you draw the like the sigil of that spirit, you write the name of the sphere, then you do an invocation of that spirit, and then you tell it that you're trying to open up that clipothic sphere, okay, or the sephirothic sphere, whatever the case is. And you can set up a, a certain sequence of mantra or ends or whatever you want, and then you simply burn it, and then you wait, and it will manifest. Like you will see it manifest in your reality um, if you did it, you know, if you actually went through the process. And yeah, it's that simple. Or you could even, you can put your blood on it from your left hand. You could prick your finger, put your blood on it to make sure it works. Because when you're linking your genetic code to it, the tree itself is the genetic code. So you're accessing it directly. So that's why it looks like the DNA symbol. That's what I was referring to, the DNA strand. Okay. So that's what, that's what I did. Um, and obviously, once again, I'm going to be making a whole um, course on initiation. But that's how you initiate it. And yeah, you tell you're moving through intuition because you will notice things change and certain correspondences happen. But you definitely want to study the sphere so that you know when these correspondences come up, you know where you're at. But me, on the other hand, like I didn't know when I was going through the majority of my journey where I was necessarily, but I knew intuitively where I thought I was, and that's where I, I was, okay? So intuition for me worked. So that's what I'll say to you. And that was a good question, so thank you. All right, let's see here. TSRC number 41 says taking notes. Wonderful, good. 
My Broomstick is a King's Song. That's a funny name. My Broomstick is a King's Song KS-S20 Eagle. Very interesting name, my friend. He says, oh, yeah. <laughs> Cran just says, I just muted the spoiler alert, <laughs> but I saw what you said. LOL. Oh, that's so funny. Sorry about that. Yeah, you know, it is what it is, though. But it's cool. No, like one of the things that I recommend, though, is like listening to, you know, me talk about the occult significance within these movies so that when you go to watch it, you're going to know what to you're going to see the, the symbol as a manifest as the movie's playing. So in regards to the Green Knight, that's a like for most people that watch that movie, they were probably like so like, what did that mean? They're probably like they they're probably left dumbfounded. Okay, I know specifically in the theater that I went to, there was a couple that were sitting a couple seats behind me, and they were upset because they didn't like the movie. And me personally, I like the movie because I'm aware of all the occult symbolism. So I know what it's all in reference to and what it's about. But the couple behind me, they just thought it was all random and they thought it was – they didn't like it. So it's one of those movies like if you listen especially to the YouTube movie that I have – or excuse me, YouTube video that I have coming out soon on The Green Knight. If you listen to that video first before watching the movie, it will probably make the movie a lot more interesting for when you go to watch it. That's what I'll say to that. Penta says, what's the importance of a circle before a ritual? Um, the circle gives you protection. So typically the circle can keep energies outside from getting inside the circle. Okay, that's literally what the circle represents. So by creating a circle around yourself, and the way that I show on my Patreon is using crystal quartz and using a specific number of them. Um, then you are protecting yourself from getting possessed by that force that you are going to be invoking. But you also want to use more techniques. I mean, the circle can do it, but it's not 100% guaranteed that's fully going to work because you're eventually going to step outside of that circle. Okay. So, you know, what I teach on my Patreon is have a circle, which is mainly, it's not mainly just for protecting you, but it increases your power too, because the circle is connected to all the spheres on the tree. Okay. And clear quartz is clear or white like Kether. Okay. So it connects you to that energy. And uh, then what I recommend is using a triangle of art of smoky quartz to hold the spirit within and then an orb to trap it so that once you trap it, it can't get you. So when you close out everything, it's in your orb. Okay. So that's what I recommend. Um, so that's so the importance of the circle was what I what I explained. Um, it increases your power and gives you extra protection, hundred percent. And do I recommend using it? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Penta says, and not only that, when it comes to apparitions and dark entities, are they real or is it a mental projection? They're real, hundred percent real. They're real and they will make you have mental projections, okay, of them and their influence. TSRC, how to deal with ego. Um, so the way that you deal with ego is you – first, you got to understand what the ego is, okay? You got to understand that the ego is a part of your being that wants to feel important. It's a part of your being that wants to experience – pretty much only things that you desire and it wants to feel important. It wants to feel all the energies of the things that you think specifically what you think will make you happy. This is what the ego is programmed in every human being to do. So it makes you have a sense of self importance that is extra inflated than what your true self-worth is. So that sounds dark and that sounds like, you know, deep, but that's what the ego is, is about. It makes you feel more important than you actually are in a false sense. Okay. So the ego makes you falsely self-important and it refrains you from understanding your soul fully. 
and what your true being is, which is where your real importance lo uh, lies. Um, so the, the art of the ego is to controllingly break it down, you know, by controlling it. Okay. What I mean by this is by putting yourself in circumstances that challenge your ego to a degree where you are ready to handle so that you can break it down and then it can rebuild itself from a new perspective and then do that same process again from a new perspective. Every time you break down your ego and it reshapes itself, you're gaining a new level of awareness. You're removing certain barriers and programs within your ego. And you do this to a certain degree as many times as you need to. And the more you do it, the more you're removing those barriers in your ego. And that's why when it comes to clipothic initiation, this is the realm of deletion. This is the realm where your ego gets challenged on the darkest and deepest levels in accordance to your unconscious and your subconscious awareness. So it will literally put you through the darkest experiences that you thought imaginable and going through those experiences, it destroys your ego completely. So every one of these clipothic spheres that I initiated through destroyed my ego. Every one, all the way up to this sphere. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven huge ego deaths up to this point. And then when you go to cross the abyss in the clip off, you lose your ego. Okay. So there's a lot of people that tell you, you can't lose your ego, whatever the case is. You can lose your ego. You can sacrifice your ego and gain a completely new self-awareness, which comes from your soul, which is a, a basically a mix between your soul and your spirit combined together, which comes into your body, which is what I call the daemon. Some people call it the true self. Some people call it the higher self, but in reality, it's the higher and lower self. Uh, some people call it the holy guardian angel, but that. The daemon, I call it daemon because it's day, moon, masculine, feminine, soul, spirit together. It becomes your new awareness. And that's where your sense of self comes from, which is your soul first and then your spirit. So your new awareness is hyper-focused on evolution rather than feeling important, rather than um, wanting to be noticed, rather than wanting to experience your desires if that means sacrificing your evolutionary potential. Okay. And crossing the abyss within the clip off is one of the hardest experiences to go through because Karanzon tries to devour your soul. And if you successfully cross, then it will, instead of taking your soul, it will take your ego. It will put you through so much dark matter energy that your ego literally gets removed from your being, your energetic being. And your soul uh, collapses from so much dark matter energy and your spirit travels to the source of all creation, dissolves into the source, comes back out, comes into your body, soul collapse, reshapes into a black hole. And now your entire awareness is consuming constantly in alignment with the source, which is constant evolution. And your sense of self-importance is, which was the ego, is removed from your being. So it takes time, even after successfully crossing the abyss, to really integrate all of that experience that happens when you're crossing the abyss. But there's the reality is, is most people do not successfully cross. And in order to successfully cross, um, most of the times you need somebody that already has done it to help you cross. Okay, so that's what I'm going to say to that. Good question. Let's see. Okay, so I just want to say again, if there is anybody that wants to guarantee their questions get answered within this live stream, then go ahead and leave a super chat and I will answer that right off the bat. Okay, and within the most depth. And I see that we have 20 people in the live stream and we have 29 thumbs up. So if there is anybody that is within this live stream that has not hit the thumbs up yet, just go ahead and check. And then hit that thumbs up because we want to at least crack the 30 thumbs up mark. Okay. Um, so yeah, other than that, I'm just going to keep reading through and seeing what's going on. 
And if anyone wants to gain access to the YouTube membership, which comes with the exclusive badge and exclusive emojis and has your name appear in green, then definitely check out the link that's pinned at the top of the comment section. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. So here we go. Mindflow, who is a YouTube member says, I thought I could control the, tr the toll, but all I can do is just accept it. This sucked. I just want to breathe, man. I didn't realize how egoic I was. Yeah. So Mindflow, for those of you, for those of you that don't know, um, is a Patreon member and has been a Patreon member for a while and also a YouTube member. And we've talked and he's somebody that's initiated into the clip off. So he's speaking from actual experience being in the clip off right now. And what he says is, I thought I could control the toll, but all I can do is just accept it. This sucked. I just want to breathe, man. I didn't realize how egoic I was. So this is exactly what the clip off is like feeling and experiencing. Uh, you get to a point of having to let go and having to be receptive because the energies that you're dealing with in the clip off are so dark and so uh, programmed to delete your sense of self-importance that when you try to fight those clip -off forces, they attack you even harder. So it forces you to just surrender and let go. And obviously that's very uncomfortable when you're not used to doing that, when you're used to being able to control your reality, when you're used to being able to feel, at least feel like you're in control of your reality. That's the, that's the word I want to say. When you're used to feeling like you're controlling reality because you're in control of everything that's going on and yourself based off your ego, and then having that ripped away from you and having to be open and receptive, uh, hyper receptive, that's very uncomfortable, but it is extremely healing and it is extremely beneficial once you integrate that state of being. Because when you integrate it, you become a real powerful being. Okay. And it takes time. And that full integration will take place when you finish within your clipothic journey. Okay. So that's what I'll say to that. Wherever you finish at. Okay. So thank you, Mindflow. I appreciate you saying that. I think that definitely offered a lot of people value. And I see we got a new YouTube member. So we got Dark Light of Bennu, who has become a source vampire. Welcome to the YouTube membership. Glad to see you, Dark Light of Bennu. Glad to see you on and welcome. And then we got a super chat right next to it that says, from Cranges, which is $5. Thank you very much, Cranges. I appreciate you highly. And the question is, could you explain the significance of the number 717. So I'm not 100% about the number 717, like if that's some special number or something, but I can break it down into numerology. So if we have 717 and we take the one, we add it to the seven, that's going to make eight. Then we add the seven to the eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's going to equate to the number 15. Okay. So 717 breaks down into 15. And if we take that 15, and we look at the Kabbalistic tree, we can see two things. And this is interesting. So check this out. So the 15th path is associated with the path of the emperor in regards to the major arcana. It's the emperor. And it stands, the Hebrew word for it is He. So He, in regards to Hebrew alphabet, is going to be H. And in regards to the English translation of hey, it's going to stand for window, okay? And this is the feminine uh, word within the uh, Kabbalistic language, hey. So you have yod, hey, vow, hey. Hey is feminine. Um, and it's associated with, in Hebrew numerology, with the number five, also connected to the pentagram. Um, but yes, yeah, specifically it stands for the emperor and that path, as you can see, which is right here is connecting from the center of the tree going all the way up to Chokma. So if we look at it from the front where it's bigger, this path is right here going from the center Bina into Chokma. Okay. And then if we take 15 and break it into more numerology, you would do one plus five, which equals six. And if you can see 
This is the sixth sphere on the tree called Tifereth. So if you're seeing the number 717 a lot, this may indicate this is where you are on the Kabbalistic tree. Okay? That's just a thought. Okay? And you're pulling on this pathway currently. All broken down from numerology. Getting higher level under uh, higher level wisdom specifically from Chokma. Ruled by Neptune. You're in the sphere of the sun. That's what I'll say to that. So thank you very much for the super chat. I appreciate that. That's wonderful. Um, let's see. Um, so yeah, so in a nutshell, what that all broke down to is higher level wisdom. That's a number of higher level wisdom. That's also, it's a balanced number. You know, it truly is a balanced number because it's connected to the Hebrew word, hey, which is feminine, but it's coming from higher level wisdom. Okay. Which is masculine. Wisdom is masculine. Okay. So that's very valuable. It's like being receptive to gain higher level wisdom and then have it bring new awareness to you because it's ruled by the sun, that sphere of the sun. So that's what I'm going to say. Okay. So let's see here. Scrolling back up. I appreciate the super chat. Once again, if anybody else wants to guarantee their questions get answered through this super chat, definitely make sure you leave um, or excuse me, through this live stream, definitely make sure you leave a super chat. I see somebody just left one right now, which I will be covering. Um, and yes, I will be answering your super chats in as much depth as I can. So make sure you ask any question that you have, uh, you know, that you want to get answered, you know, and now's your time and I will answer it. And if I can't answer it, then I will have you send a second message, which gives you a second question. Okay. If I can't answer your super chat question. Okay. So I see we got another super chat from J swoop, which is $20. Thank you very much. J swoop. I appreciate that. And it appears in orange, which is wonderful. I really love that. Thank you so much. So J swoop says, Hey, Jeremiah, this is Nolan. Oh, what's up, Nolan? Good to see you. Um, I just wanted to let you know that you're a great teacher and you changed my life. And I ordered another reading. And when someone is a source vampire, can they, uh, can they do what society deems impossible? Wow. Well, first of all, I want to say I appreciate you very much. I appreciate your feedback and you are, uh, you know, you're awesome. You know, I appreciate that. Um, and it, yeah, I'm very excited to do your reading as well. You know, it's going to be very fun and I will be reaching out to you very soon um, in regards to your reading. And it will, I will, I know you booked it for today, but I'm going to be sending it to you tomorrow afternoon Pacific time. Okay. So it will be sent to you tomorrow. And once again, I will be getting in touch with you and everything after this is over. Okay. So appreciate that. Just wanted to give you some clarity on what's going on. And then, um, let's see here. Your question is when someone is a source vampire, can they do what society deems impossible? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Um, so yeah, so the mass collective is what society is, you know, the society, uh, or excuse me, the mass collective forms the society. So what is the mass collective? The mass collective is the majority of human beings around you and in the world right now that exist within societies. The majority of these people within their unconscious mind, whether they're aware of it or not, whether they're in control of it or not, that's what's creating what's known as the mass collective. It's the unconscious of every human being that's projecting itself into the astral plane, creating what's known as the mass collective. Okay. Uh, also can be known as the mass collective unconscious. So the mass collective is always going to be programmed to limit you because that is what's constantly being programmed through all of the major media industries, all of the major movie, TV, music, news, all kinds of industries, work industries, corporations, they're all programmed to limit your potential towards being a better employee, being a better worker, being a better, essentially someone that can follow orders better. Okay. Under a certain level of authority. So yes. So in regards to becoming a source vampire, what that means is becoming somebody 
who is ultra receptive to the degree where they're always open to the unknown with the intent of gaining more understanding, wisdom, and knowledge in the process, which a natural product of that is increasing your own personal power in the direction of evolution. So absolutely, uh, when someone is a source vampire, they can do what society deems impossible. I am a living example of it because everyone that is in my life to some degree doubted me. They never believed that I could run a YouTube channel and have it financially take care of myself and that I wouldn't have to work for anybody but myself. Um, I wouldn't be able to have this much freedom. I wouldn't be able to be in such a wonderful relationship that I'm in. I wouldn't be able to have as many wonderful relationships that I have. <laughs> you know, everyone told me this wasn't possible. That's what the mass collective told me. Like literally, like, and this is, this has happened to me a couple times on my journey. Um, but I did it because I don't care what the mass collective thinks when it comes to when they try to limit me because I understand what they're programmed to do. And it only makes sense if the mass collective is being indoctrinated by SRA, satanic ritual abuse constantly, and then they're getting controlled to be followers of higher authority to take orders, then of course they're only going to think you can get so far because that's the reality that they subscribed to. But when you become a source vampire, you're ultimately receptive, which means you're open to the idea of not having any authority govern you and completely controlling the outcome of your destiny. Okay. And you know, that's, that's in alignment with my intention and that's in the alignment of what I want. And I intuitively, and everyone intuitively knows what they truly want and knows what they, what they want to experience and what's in alignment with their soul's potential. But some people fight that with their own mind. They fight their own destiny, their own potential with their own mind, and they will limit themselves. They will say, no, I can't do that because this is what this is and this and this and this and this and this. And that, but if I did that, then I can't do. So you can choose that route or you can be ultimately receptive and trust the process, trust your soul and trust that having the intuition and going through the motions of getting to your destination or getting to your life's purpose and living it out fully, you can trust it and then eventually get there. So that's what I'll say to your question. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And then in regards to being a source vampire, that is a service that I offer as a top tier on my Patreon, which is tier four, where I literally change your entire energetic structure permanently to make you way more receptive, which is what I call uh, the vampire service. So if anyone's interested in that, check out the top tier four service that is on my uh, Patreon. Okay. That was one of my most popular tiers, by the way. Uh, and thank you again, Jay Soup. That was a wonderful question. I think that question even uh, potentially impacted somebody's life. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. All righty. So once again, I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to be on the live stream. Uh, not Yeah. Once again, not sure how much longer I'm going to be on the live stream. So if anybody has any questions that they want to guarantee get answered, uh, definitely make sure you go ahead and you leave your super chat. And I just want to say, no, I'll actually say it at the two hour mark. Um, so yeah, other than that, I'm just going to kind of keep scrolling through and see, seeing what's going on. So let's take a look. And I appreciate, I just want to say this. I appreciate everybody who has left super chat, super chat so far. You know, that's always a wonderful thing. And it always shows me that you're taking your, uh, your knowledge, understanding, wisdom, uh, and specifically your intent, you know, to a deeper degree, because if you're willing to pay for knowledge or you're willing to pay for information or advice or teaching, whatever the case, um, it shows that you're taking your own self more seriously. And there are benefits from that. Okay. There are energetic benefits from that. And I just want to say that. So I appreciate all of you that do that, uh, specifically because you're showing me signs that you're taking your evolutionary journey more seriously and your questions are uh, higher tier 
and um, you know, it helps support my channel as well. And that's also a thing that I really do highly appreciate all the time. Okay. So thank you. And then I appreciate everyone who's asking questions in the live stream in general, who's being active in the chat because you know, this is a wonderful opportunity to really get some high level occult information. Okay. And I'm I, I say it the way it is, you know, I'm telling you right now from personal experience, I have a lot of information and a lot of experience that not a lot of people have. And I'm not the only person out here, but I'm one of the only people out here that's sharing this information openly. Okay. And I, I love what I do and there's no shame in my game whatsoever. And I'm aware of, you know, what I'm doing very much, very much aware. And, uh, yeah, so I appreciate everybody who's in the chat asking questions in general. And I do want to say this for everyone that's in the live stream, make sure you hit a thumbs up because I see we got 29 people that are in here right now. We got 32 thumbs up. 32 is a wonderful number. I love that number. Uh, but let's see if we can get it up to at least 35. So if anyone's in here that has not hit the thumbs up yet, definitely make sure you go and you hit that thumbs up. Let's see if we can shoot that up a little bit higher. Okay. Other than that, let's see what's going on. Um, let me see here. Where did I leave off at? Oh, we got another YouTube member. So we got Jay Swoop who has become a YouTube member. Welcome to the vampire, uh, the source vampire YouTube membership. That is awesome. I'm very glad to have you uh, as a YouTube member as well. So your name is always going to appear in green. Right now, your badge is the badge of the moon. And you have access to all the uh, exclusive emojis. Uh, so also for the um, for anyone who has become YouTube members within this chat, this is what you're gaining access to. And you have access to the Psychic Warfare program with these exclusive emojis that I personally designed and created. So definitely make sure you watch my YouTube video that explains how to use those emojis called YouTube members in parentheses, psychic warfare program. Okay. And then you'll see on my YouTube members only community post exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. Cool. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. All right. Let's see here. So where did I leave off at? Okay, here we go. So TSRC says, I love astrology. Me too. Alistair says, my first bee sting was a dozen or so hornet stings at age 32. Wow. Wow, that's a lot. Ouch. Mai says, IAO from Grim Grimoires has some connection to the blue vitriol I asked you about a long time ago. And apparently it's connected to the Japanese word AOI, which means both blue and green. Interesting. Well, blue and green in regards to the Kabbalistic tree are going to be associated with Netzach and uh, Chesed. So Jupiter and Venus. And then you have the lower side, which is Arab Zarak and Gog Shablah. Okay, so Cheryl says, was living five years at place and seeing this for the first time about 80 flies early morning, just sitting on walls and ceiling. One week later, a family member passed over. Very interesting. My, it's a ritual to discover the philosopher's stone. Wonderful. I also have, uh, you know, in regards to what I teach on the Patreon, for the magic training course, we do an invocation of uh, Saint, or an evocation, I should say, of Saint Germain, and then we put them in our orb because it was uh, apparent that Saint Germain had the keys to the Philosopher's Stone. So now that he's in my orb, you know those keys are coming to me, and everyone else who's doing that. All right, so let's see. Um, in my experience, Brian Forsey says, in my experience, a lot of Christians are blind to energy. LOL. Yeah, because that's what the religion's supposed to do. 100%. That's right. J Swoop. Thanks, Jeremiah. I'm Nolan Johnson, by the way. And I'll buy a reading from you as well. Wonderful. And that's exactly what we saw. Thank you very much. 
Michelle puts a uh, green love heart emoji in the chat. Thank you, Michelle. I appreciate you. Brian says, working with that one soon. LOL. Okay. We got the Amalek emoji from Brian Forshee. Wonderful. Mai says, I'm now seeing 22 everywhere. Maybe because I'm turning 22 on September 22nd. Oh, wow. So you turn 22 on September 22nd. That's wonderful. And that's going to be a big day for you. Okay. Like that's got a lot of occult significance because there's 22 archetypal paths on the Kabbalistic tree. And that may be a very initiatory day for you. Okay. Just saying. Okay. That's awesome. Michelle says, Lucifer is with me. He is a very handsome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Julie says, thinking of working with Elagos for courts. Have some, I don't want to say that because I'll probably butcher it. Zion, fam members trying to steal a large amount of money. Well, that sucks. Yeah, try. Try working with, uh, you know, any of the demonic or any of the Ars Goetia that are in regards to court issues. Um, I know Lucifer is big in court. You know, Lucifer is an entity that can help you out in court. That's a fact. Uh, so is, uh, I would even say so is Belial. Okay. Uh, Philip Magical Number 12 says, my, right when you posted that, I saw 22 also. See, that's going to be a big day for you, uh, my. It's a big day. Thank you for uh, pointing that out, Philip. And that's awesome. You got that correspondence. Okay, so we got another super chat. So it's from Nolan444. Wonderful. Glad to see you on here. And you got the 444. 4812. Another 12. The number 12 is great. I love that. Um, and then you say, can a source vampire do an energy blast that can send someone flying? So if you're speaking about in regards to like physically send them flying, like as in a movie, like someone's conjuring up energy and pushing it and then makes them fly. That's possible, but that's very rare. That's going to happen. Like that is extremely like, that's very high level, very advanced and would take years to learn how to master. So in those regards, most likely no, but it's possible. Now in regards to doing something energetically that causes someone to like, for example, you energetically do a ritual or spell that sends energy, blasts energy at somebody. And then at some point in their near future, that person, your target ends up flying, whether it's whatever the, the intent is behind the ritual where they end up flying. I don't know what the, the intent is, if it's good or bad, that is very likely because if your ritual is programmed to make someone fly and you blast energy at it, then it can happen. So that's what I will, um, so you said, can a source vampire do an energy blast that can send someone flying? That's what I'll say to that question. Um, but being a source vampire primarily is, yeah, it's increasing your power because you're being ultimately receptive and you're pulling in energy and that energy is downloading into your being and it's helping you gain more energy, gain power, sexual energy. It's increasing your sexual energy and you're being more receptive. So you're taking in more information in regards to understanding and wisdom and knowledge, which is helping you evolve. Okay. So thank you very much for that super chat. Thank you. Um, let's see here. Where was I? Okay, here we go. Michelle says, Lucifer only comes and goes, but with me. Interesting. Michelle also says, I love your energy. Can't get enough. Thank you. I appreciate it. Myself says, starting yesterday, I permanently quit drinking soda, juice, etc. I'm only gonna drink water now. Wonderful. That's awesome. And I've been doing that for a long, pretty long time now, uh, years. And I always drink my high pH water too. I haven't been drinking regular water for years either. Higher pH alkaline water. And I love it. You know, it's done a lot of wonders for me. Okay. So that's awesome you did that. I'm glad to hear that. Cheryl says, that's why I get more synchronicity in my life when I watch your videos. That's awesome. And I'm glad you brought that up because I, I feel like there's a lot of people that get a lot of synchronicities when they start listening to my content and start observing their reality as well. Because once again, the things I'm talking about are very, 
high level occult sciences. So that means they are going to change your reality. Okay. So that's awesome that you mentioned that uh, openly because yes, you should get more synchronicities by watching my content and the things that I talk about. So thank you. Brian Forshee says, you got a crush on Jeremiah, don't you, Michelle? <laughs> That's funny. Cheryl says, interesting, shelved energy. Wow, got more of my attention then. <laughs> Dark Light of Binu says, I'm so grateful I found you. Amalek had came to me some months ago. I could only find info on the Amalekites. Then I found a video of you speaking about the Black Dragon. Interesting, very interesting. I've recently started studying. Okay, so that's awesome. So as soon as you got into that Amalek dragon energy, it directly led you to my channel. So I'm always glad to hear that. And um, I'm yeah, I'm I'm absolutely glad to have you a part of the uh, you know a part of my YouTube channel and as a subscriber because you know I'm sure a lot of my a lot of the information that I talk about um, can definitely help you. Uh, you know, I'm sure it'll give you a lot of clarity and and guidance on your journey in regards to understanding this this dragon force and in regards to the occult sciences and hopefully initiation. Okay. So thank you very much for saying that. And, uh, I'm glad you're getting into it. I'm glad you're getting into it. Dark light of Benu says demonology. Perfect. Perfect. So yeah, so you can't cross the right channel. You know, I am, I am your person in regards to understanding, uh, these types of things. Okay. Cheryl says, thank you. It, it did scare me. I am starting to learn about this more. Okay. Devin McLean says, that reminds me of this anime world trigger where the neighbors go after and can sense the people with the most Treon energy. Okay. So in regards to what you're saying, Devin, there are a lot of animes for everyone that's listening to this. There are a lot of animes that have super deep occult symbolism. Me personally, I'm not an anime watcher. I just never was like into it uh, aesthetically. Uh, I have a friend, a brother that is into it, who's also a high-level cult initiate, and he's into anime, and he will tell me about the uh, storylines of some of these animes, and he will tell me, and I will be able to piece it together. And, I mean, those those anime series, some of these anime series are, they are only occult. Like, everything about it is just all occult. It's very, I mean, it's very similar to all the other stuff I talk about, like all these other industries and everything, but... Anime is very, yeah, very profound. So if you understand the occult and you watch anime, there's a lot of value to gain from studying what you're watching. Yeah. All right, let's see here. Okay, so we, we are at the two hour and two minute mark, 22. There we go again. And I want to say, just so everyone knows, um, this is my 18th live stream that I have publicly on my channel. Okay, when I get to the 22nd live stream, there's a number 22 again. When I get to the 22nd live stream, I am no longer going to be uploading these live streams publicly to my YouTube channel once they are finished. Okay, rather, I'm going to be uploading them directly to my Patreon so that my Patreon members that are tier two or up are going to have access to those live streams permanently, you know, once they're finished. Uh, once again, I am not going to stop doing live streams. Live streams are going to be ongoing for my YouTube channel. But the only thing I'm saying is that once I get to the 22nd live stream, this is the 18th, so 19, 20, 21, 22, four more, they will no longer be publicly released to my YouTube channel. They will only be on my Patreon. So you'll have to become a Patreon member to tune into those live streams afterwards. Um, but yeah, you know, other than that, you know, one, you know, once again, one of the main reasons I'm doing that is because I don't want to have my YouTube channel mixed in with like all these live streams and then these professional videos. I want to make it more ordered. And, you know, definitely if you're a Patreon member, you definitely deserve to have that extra content. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that's what I'm going to say to that. So just so everybody knows. And once again, I'm probably not going to be on here for much longer. So if you have any uh, super chats you want to make sure you get in while I am here and I am on this live stream, definitely make sure you leave your super chats now. Uh, I will cover them 100% sure. If you leave a super chat, you are going to get your question answered. And I'm going to try my best to answer it in the most depth as possible, in the most depth that I can as possible. Okay, so I just want to say that as well. 
And if there's anybody new that is in this live stream as well that has not hit a thumbs up yet, definitely make sure you hit a thumbs up. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Let's see here. Alexis23 says, hi. Good to see you, Alexis. Wonderful to see you in here. Uh, Travis Lee says, question. When a Godhead reading is booked, how far out in day's time until the reading is done? Thanks. Okay, so I think you're talking about like my tarot reading service. Um, so yeah, so when you book a tarot card reading, um, it depends. Sometimes I'll do your tarot card reading that exact day that you get it booked um, within a, a couple hours time of when it's booked. Or a lot of the times I will end up doing your reading the day after just so that, you know, because a lot of times I'll get these, you know, these readings booked with me and I'm busy, like I'm doing things in my, in my daily life. Uh, so then I'll just, you know, I'll reach out to you as soon as I can, which will literally be within the hour. Uh, I'll reach out to you and I'll let you know that I need three random numbers from you and I need the purpose for your reading. And then I'll also let you know that I'm going to be sending your reading over to you uh, tomorrow afternoon Pacific time. And that's what I do for most of my readings. Um, and it always works out just fine. Okay. So that's to answer that question. I appreciate that. And then your next question is, once a Godhead reading is booked, you say question, Okay, so that's that's the same question. Okay, so I hope that answered your question. Um, Brian Forshe says, Travis, I booked on the 30th and had a reading on the 31st. See, exactly. And that was exactly what I was just explaining. Um, so there's times where I will have the time and I can do it like right there. Uh, but most of the times when someone books their reading with me, I will send the reading the next day. Um, uh, and it's very, very rare occasion where I won't send it the next day, uh, like in cases if I'm sick or maybe I do not have access to my tarot deck or for reason like that. Very rare case. Um, but regardless, I will let you know as soon as I get in touch with you, which I try to get in touch with you literally as soon as possible. Um, so yeah, so I will let you know when that card reading will be sent to you and everyone gets their readings. There has not been one person that's booked and has not gotten their reading. Uh, I will get your reading you know, to you. And it's usually going to take a day to get it to you. There's 90% times it takes a day, one day to get the reading sent to you. Okay. So that's what I'll say. Um, thank you, Brian Forshe for uh, confirming that as well. Adrian Garcia says, is martial arts a good way to break down the ego? Yes, 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 yes. And I got my Brazilian jiu-jitsu suit that's in my closet right now. Um, and yes, martial arts is key. I would recommend anybody get into martial arts, uh, in regards to any form of development. Like if you're trying to evolve, uh, in general, get into martial arts because the martial arts is based around clipothic energy. I mean, what is the highest tier belt? It's a black belt dark. Okay. I'm telling you, I've been in martial arts for uh, I've, I've done it for six months and I was taking boxing and jujitsu. Uh, and within those six months, I was able to see how much value there is within this sport and within this art in regards to self-development. I mean, it, you can't have an ego in martial arts if you're in a good academy, because if you speak a big game, if you speak in a sense of more self-importance than you truly are, you're about to get your ass kicked by the person you're ending. You're going to end up uh, rolling with or sparring with. You will see the results manifest very quickly. So that's what I'm going to say to that. And it's that's a great way to train your awareness. And it will for sure if you can do martial arts in a in a in a good academy, you will for hundred percent sure um, be ready, willing, and able to get into higher level initiations in regards to the occult field. Okay. 100% sure. And if you balance martial arts with yoga, which is what I did, hot yoga, where one day you do the martial arts and the sparring or whatever the case is, whatever form of martial art. And then another day you do your hot yoga. That's another thing that I highly recommend because you're getting a great balance of feminine flow energy. And then you're getting a balance of masculine, you know, technique, you know, technique. So that's what I'll say to that. 
great question. Thank you very much for saying that because I think people needed to hear that. And I have said that multiple times before, so I hope people are really listening to what I'm saying. Okay. All righty, let's see here. Okay, so I just want to let everyone know that I'm going to be on here um, up until two hours and 30 minutes. So if you can look at the time frame that this live stream has been going, I'm going to be on here for another 20 minutes. So if anyone has questions they want to guaranteed get answered within this next 20 minutes, uh, definitely go ahead and leave your super chats right now. Um, but yeah, other than that, I'm just going to keep scrolling through and I will be ending in about 20 minutes. Okay. Just so you know. Okay. Fallen Hokage says, I see 47 so much, it's not even funny. And that's a good thing because 47 is connected to the number 11, which is always energy and transformation and associated with the hidden sphere of knowledge, also connected to death energy. Okay. Dark Light of Bino says, hello. Welcome, Dark Knight. As a YouTube member, I see your chat and your name now in green. K Mint says, no. You're completely wrong on everything. Came in also says, no, you're completely wrong on everything. Twice. Okay. And then Cran just says, that correlates to the tarot reading you did in so many ways. Thank you. I appreciate you. Um, and yeah, see, exactly. It, yeah. So in regards to your reading, it does correlate. So uh, in regards to your super chat with what we were talking about, the number 717, 717, and breaking it all down. See how you brought that up right now when you're on your evolutionary journey in those specific spheres, working through those pathways, it does, see, it's all connected. And that's, see, this is the art of understanding this uh, system of Kabbalah. And there's not a lot of people that can do that. Okay. So I'm glad you're able to recognize that. And you saw that you see where you're located and what I just explained came in. No, no, all wrong. Oh no. We have a, I think we have a troll in the chat in the chat. Uh oh, uh, we got Mindflow taking care of them right now. Let's go, Mindflow. That's what I'm talking about. Mindflow is like, give me all that energy. Mindflow is active on that on that psychic warfare dungeon, and I don't blame him at all because it's it's literally the most simple form of psychic warfare. It is lit and one of the most powerful. And the more people that use it, it's getting more powerful. So yeah, Mindflow knows exactly what he's doing, uh, and he used it on Kmit. So. That's a great example of the Psychic Warfare program. For those of you that don't know, when you become a YouTube member, you gain access to the exclusive emojis that you see that MindFlow is using, which is the um, tarot card of death, the tower. Then you put the name of the target followed by the seventh term of the Fibonacci and then Amalek, and then in parentheses, destroy target. And it will literally take a real energetic effect on your target and their life will start degradating if they don't know how to handle that energy. Uh, it will attack them in their ego. So obviously k -Mint comes in the chat. No, 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 all wrong, all wrong. It's like, why are you even in here then? Like, just leave, okay? But obviously we know why you're in here because you're a generator. So MindFlow is taking advantage of it and I love it. Thank you, MindFlow. Uh, Devin McLean says, you said that right at 546, at least here in Texas, which also breaks down to 15.2. You see, look at Devin. Devin putting some pieces together as well, all these correspondences and look, all the people that are finding all these correspondences, they just happen to be YouTube members, okay? And they're Patreon members as well that have top tier service. So you can see, uh, and then we got MindFlow as well, and you can see that these are all top tier members. And look at this, they're all seeing correspondences, okay? Let that be a sign that this uh, vampire service is powerful and that people that take my content seriously and study it they're becoming more receptive and they're being, you're, they're more able to see these correspondences, things in that nature. That's the, this, that is a call magic. And that's, that is doing ritual based off intent by seeing correspondences like that. So that's awesome. I'm glad you saw that. Thank you, Devin. Mindflow says wrong chat came in. <laughs> came in says, I would never give charity to you. Get a real job. All right. Let's see if K is came in. Still in oh man, came in. You've been hating this whole time. Okay. 
let's see. Wait, wait. So it looks like Cayman actually kind of left. So we'll give it a second. Let's see if Cayman says anything else. Um, but I think maybe the psychic warfare started to kick in a little bit. We'll see. Uh, everyone's been using this. <laughs> everyone's using the psychic warfare on Cayman. Cayman, I would not want to be you right now. I would not want to be you. You just came into a chat full of people that are ready to do you in. And uh, that's why I set it up this way because like, you know, like when you run a, you know, when you run any sort of successful business, there's going to be haters. And since this is my business, you know, I'm going to do my haters in because that's why they're showing up in the first place. And uh, it's Luciferianism technology. And I want to make it available for everyone that's a YouTube member. And uh, it's awesome because like, <laughs> it's like whenever a hater comes in, they just get done in. And we'll see. I mean, it's it's going to have a strong energetic effect on this person. And they will not be back again. Every person that has shown up in my uh, live chats that has caused, you know, intentional disruption and disorder, uh, everyone that this technology has been used on has not shown up again. You know, maybe they've shown up like a couple days later and said one more thing. And then, but then after at least at, at, at the, uh, least a month or excuse me at the most a month they're gone you don't see them anymore they're like completely gone they're just and the reason why is because these energies are affecting them physically emotionally and mentally and spiritually these energies from my psychic warfare program i'll type i'll show the emojis right now back to back to back these emojis Although you may think this is just very simple and it's too good to be true, this is psychic warfare at its finest and will literally destroy your enemies, okay? You don't believe me, you don't need to. But I do know that I have used it on people that have asked me to use it on them, which sounds funny. There was somebody that wanted this to be used on them in my chat just to just to like experience their own ego death. And I think they kind of wanted to know if it was real or not. And they ended up emailing me later that night and telling me how they were feeling and that it was like really affecting them. And I was just like, thanks for letting me know. And I'm sorry <laughs> that you had to go through that, you know, and go through these effects, but you know, just make sure you process it. And that's what I was saying. But yeah, it really does affect people. Um, so yeah, it looks like Cayman's not in the chat anymore. So yeah, that was it. So cool. Thank you everybody for that, for doing them in. Um, so let me scroll back up to see where I was. Okay, so. Cool, cool, cool. Came in said, I would never give charity to you, get a real job. Okay, cringes. You're Philip Magical. Okay, everyone's doing them in, that's so funny. Great, I love that. Out of the blue. Is a Godhead reading including to sign up for the highest Patreon vampire tier level? No, no. A tarot reading is separate from the Patreon. So the Patreon is going to be my first link in the description. And then the second link below it is going to be the tarot card reading. And then the third link below that is going to be the YouTube membership. Uh, that's where you gain access to that. The vampire service is for tier four of the Patreon. Okay. Um, Cranjus says, I feel so blessed to have come across this channel. I appreciate you, Cranjus, and I feel so blessed to have people like you following my channel. Brian Forshe, did them in. Let's go. K Mint says, Does God approve of scamming for donos by pretending to be a medium? Uh, that's what he says. Cheryl says, Before you become a powerful magician and going into the Kabbalist tree, is protective jewelry enough to wear to protect you? Thanks. Um, protective. Okay, so I'm gonna actually I'm gonna be making YouTube videos on that, and uh, making videos on my Patreon uh, showing how to charge your jewelry or how to put spirits inside of your jewelry, um, because that's a good question and that's directly connected to Egyptian magic, where the Egyptians were very keen on using. Uh, amulets and using jewelry uh, as their psychic protection and their psychic power links. Um, and yes, jewelry has been a big part on my journey. So I do recommend you find some sort of ring or a necklace, specifically a ring 
that you are intuitively led towards getting that can represent something to you in regards to your protection and power in the occult. So the first ring that I was intuitively led to purchase was this death ring, which is on the finger of water, which is the finger of death, because the realm of the south is the realm of the undead. Okay. And then all these other rings have all kinds of powers as well. You can see the pentagram. This is my Hecate orb. Uh, this is the eye. It looks like an eye, but it also has seven diamonds. This has 18 connecting it to the moon. This has seven, but if you add seven plus the main two large diamonds, that creates nine, which is serpentine energy. Uh, yeah, so it's got all kinds of symbolism. And yeah, there's a lot of protection associated with it as well. And I do recommend it. So thank you for saying that. Okay, so I see we got another super chat. So I'm going to click on it. Alexis23 says, hi, Jeremiah. Thank you for helping me along so far. We'll get a tarot card reading soon. We'll follow any advice. Thank you. Want to start something before 2022. Wonderful. Well, first thing I want to say is I appreciate you. And I appreciate you, uh, you know, being active on my channel and, you know, being active in the chat and partaking in the Patreon and the YouTube membership. And thank you for leaving a super chat. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm so excited to be able to do a reading for you whenever you book it. Um, that'll be very fun. And especially since I already feel like I know you because you're so active on my platforms. Um, and yeah, you know, the reading will give you a very strong awareness of where you are and what to expect moving forward. Um, so that can definitely help you in regards to starting something before 2022 and 2022 in general is going to be a very big year for a lot of people. It's going to be a very, like, it's going to be an initiatory year. I mean, it's two, 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 2022. So that's all connecting to the number six. If you add up two plus two plus two, 2022, six, which is the center of the tree ruled by the sun. So this is like mass collective awareness in regards to 22, which is the 22 paths on the tree. So this is mass collective awareness that people are going to have to start evolving or else they're not going to be happy with what's going on. Okay. And as I said that there's 22 people in the live stream right now. So that's funny. Thank you again, Alexis. All right, let's see here. So once again, um, I'm wrapping up this live stream in literally the next eight minutes. So if you have any last live or excuse me, any last super chats that you want to leave and get your question answered 100% sure, now is the time to leave your super chats. Um, so yeah, so if you want to get your question answered in depth, go ahead and leave your super chats now because when it hits the two hour, 30 minute mark, I'm ending the live stream. Okay. And I've, you know, so far, once again, I appreciate everyone who's been leaving all those super chats so far and everyone who's been active in the chat. It's been a great live stream and I love doing this. I swear on everything. This is so fun for me. All right. So let's see. Oh, and I see we, hold on. We got, we had a super chat from Cranjus that I didn't see. So let me answer that right now. So Cranjus leaves $4 and 44 cents and says, Thank you for the super chat, Cranjus, and says, advice on using a black mirror. So yeah, so the mirror is going to be in regards to scrying. So the mirror can help you do invocation because primarily what the mirror does, and if you're using a black mirror, that's going to be in regards to the clebothic energies. So it's going to be in regards to dark matter energies, demonic forces, if you're using a black mirror. Um, which is a very valuable thing. And I've used a mirror before, but you use the mirror for scrying, which basically means allowing yourself to find a point of focus within the reflection on the mirror and holding that point of focus, usually on yourself. Like usually I would do it. I would look at my eye, my left eye, and I would focus in on it and just stay there. And then you'll notice that your, your awareness starts like fading in and out. And you start to tap into your subconscious and your unconscious. And that allows you to really expand your awareness in a deep way. Um, and it makes you more receptive. Okay. So it makes you more receptive to outside energies, which can be very beneficial. So if you do an invocation and then go and scry in a mirror, 
you're making yourself more receptive to the force that you invoked around you before you went to scry. So that's what I'll say to that in regards to advice on using a black mirror. I would use it for invocations to help you get into a deeper level of invocation specifically. Okay. So thank you again for that super chat and definitely go ahead and do it 100%. Um, let's see here. Okay. And I see we got some new Patreon members as we've been on the live stream. So we got Michelle as a Patreon member. Glad to see you as a Patreon member, especially as a top tier. That's always wonderful. And then we got, let's see, we got somebody else that was a top tier. We have Travis as well as a top tier Patreon member. So welcome to the Patreon if you are in this live stream still. That's wonderful. And then Travis has also booked an appointment for a tarot card reading. So I'm excited to do that. Okay, so let's take a look here. So Mindflow leaves a super chat and leaves a super chat of 1111. Wonderful. I like the number correspondence and I appreciate the super chat very much. And what Mindflow says is my curses are fast and painful, guaranteed every time, no longer than a week to set in most times 72 hours or less. Can you give your genuine take on ruthlessness in the universe be way. Um, okay, first of all, that's wonderful. And I'm glad you've been able to really document your ability to use psychic energies, especially in a black magic way, a dark matter energy way to command dark energies to remove and delete things from whatever it may be. Um, now, in regards to the part of your question where you say, can you give your genuine take on ruthlessness in the universe B way? That's a very good question. And I'm very glad that you asked that. So ruthlessness is one of the three principles that I say are completely necessary to making ensured success within Clipothic or universe B initiations. Uh, ruthlessness and the other two principles are warrior spirit and impeccability. And these principles are coming from the book by Carlos Casaneda, uh, the fire from within and the power of silence. So if you read these books, which I highly recommend, you will hear a lot of talk about these three key principles. Okay. And they are very key. And I'm telling you from personal experience. So in regards to your question, mind flow, ruthlessness, uh, and my genuine take on it and how I've applied it is recognizing that I am on a spiritual journey trying to achieve my highest potential. And my highest potential is what I'm here to do. I literally came here. My soul inhabited this body to live what I call my highest potential. That's why that's the only reason I'm here. Okay. And the way I see it is I have a very strong awareness of my purpose, of the reason I'm here. And not everyone has that awareness, but everyone has the soul that wants to achieve their own highest level potential, their own purpose. Because I have a very high level of awareness of my own purpose. I know how to act in accordance to achieve it. So when something comes in my path that presents an obstacle to try to stop me from achieving my highest potential, the first thought that comes in my head is they're not going to be successful and I already know they're not because I'm in alignment with my own personal evolution, trying to achieve my own highest potential, which naturally is going to beneficially affect the universe. So therefore, if there is a ego, a self-important energy trying to stop me, that most likely is being possessed by some sort of chaotic energy trying to prevent me from getting to my highest potential because I'm presenting a risk to that parasite. If there's an ego that tries to stop me, then 
that ego needs to be destroyed. And whatever was inhabiting that ego also needs to be destroyed. So simply, I just focus on the ego, which is in the human. And then by attacking that, that destroys the parasite. And that's the most effective way to do it. So being ruthless is the ability to understand that anything that comes against you and what your intuition tells you is your destiny, is your given potential towards your, you know, reaching your, 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 uh, source being, you know, the source within yourself. So anything that is in, you know, anything that comes against you achieving your highest potential, which means your own personal evolution is something that needs to be dealt with. Now, when I say it needs to be dealt with, I'm speaking in terms of energy. I'm not speaking about physically. I'm speaking about terms of energy. Okay. So obviously if you're in the occult and you move dark matter energies, you can do whatever. And if you're wise and you're in alignment with evolution, you use those dark matter energies strategically on forces and energies that come against your evolution. But also you recognize that those forces that are trying to stop you, these parasitic forces that try to stop me from evolving are also the same forces that are helping me develop more power because they're challenging me. They're giving me that Saturnian restriction, discipline. Uh, they're bringing up fear, anxiety within the being that then helps you process and understand more. Okay. So to be completely ruthless and my take on it is the full awareness of your purpose and the full awareness that you are doing everything in your potential to be in alignment with your purpose, making sure you're eating properly, you're sleeping properly, you're speaking properly, properly, you're thinking properly, you're consuming properly. And as long as you know you're doing those things, impeccability, then you know whatever you're doing is what you're supposed to be doing. And when something presents that challenge to you to try to stop you, you come with the force of evolution behind you and you destroy whatever your challenge is, whatever your opponent is, whatever your, your, that, whatever ego comes against you, you destroy it by what I say, when I say destroy, once again, I don't mean physically or verbally, I mean psychically, which means you do not allow it to control you. You can observe it, you can be receptive to it and embrace it and then intentionally be aware of it and destroy it intentionally. On the outside, you can just be a very calm being, just observing, no threat. But intentionally, inside, you can be the most dangerous force of nature that walks on this planet. And that is what ruthlessness is. Okay? So that's what I'm going to say. And I appreciate that question. And I'm pretty sure that actually uh, left, that actually ended out this live stream with that final super chat. So I think that was a great way to end out this super chat. So thank you again, Mindflow. I appreciate you. And that's my take on that. Um, so yeah, everybody. I am going to wrap it up here. This was a wonderful live stream. I appreciate everybody who left super chats. Okay, I highly appreciate all of that. I appreciate everyone who is active in this chat. Okay, everybody, you know, everybody, you know. Um, and yeah, I had a really good time. So thanks for tuning in and I'm, I'm glad everyone came in and, you know, I hope you were able to get the value that you were looking for. And I'm sure a lot of you did get some value, more value than what you were looking for. Um, so the last bit is, you know, go ahead and hit a thumbs up if you haven't yet. Let's see, maybe we can cross the 40 mark. We'll see. Um, but yeah, other than that, I'm going to wrap it up here. Once again, um, once I get to live stream 22, there will be no more that are publicly uploaded to my YouTube channel. Instead, they will be 
reverted over to my Patreon. Okay. So definitely make sure you look into the Patreon if you are following these live streams. Okay. They will be accessible to tier two and up within the Patreon. All right. Um, and then I want to say this in regards to um, where you can find the Patreon. You know, if you're watching this video live, then you can wait till the video is over and check the description. If you are watching this when it's not live, look in the description right now. The first link within my description is going to show you where the Patreon is. Click that link and you can see all the options of the tiers. Okay. Definitely look into all the tiers. They are very valuable. Um, tier one, I just want to say is tier one is just support. It's literally just a dollar a month. You don't get access to anything exclusive except for showing me that you support my YouTube channel. But if you want to gain access to the juicy stuff, the powerful stuff, and the life transforming stuff, you're going to want to look into tier two and up. Okay. That is the first link in my YouTube description. The second link is where you can book your tarot card reading with me. Once again, it's how I literally can locate exactly where you are on your own Kabbalistic journey, whether you are aware you're traveling on it or not. Okay. That's how powerful the Kabbalistic tree is. Okay. It runs through the bloodline of every human species. Okay. The third link is going to be where you can join as a YouTube member so that when you come in the chat, I can literally see your name appearing green and I will give you a special shout out whenever you are in the YouTube uh, live streams because I will see you as a YouTube member. And most importantly, you gain access to the exclusive emojis that are uh, a part of the YouTube membership. Okay. So everybody, once again, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day or night, wherever you are. And I'll see you on the next live stream going all the way up to number 22. And then I'll start seeing you on the, um, the Patreon side. But once again, I will be doing the live streams still on YouTube live. Just afterwards, they will not be uploaded publicly. Okay. So I appreciate all of you. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day or night, wherever you are. And I'll see you on the next uh, live stream later.